Good evening and welcome tonight to the Enfield Town Council regular meeting, June 20th at 7 p.m. Uh, we will begin our meeting with a prayer offering from Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to thank everybody who helped celebrate the Juneteenth holiday on Saturday. Uh, my prayer tonight is for us to help remember the historic events of Juneteenth and to honor them by coming together as a town and a civic body to appreciate and support each other. In that spirit, I'll read a brief quote by the scholar, Dr. Angela Davis. Today on Juneteenth, we celebrate the end of slavery. We memorialize those who offered us hope for the future and we renew our commitment to the ongoing struggle for freedom. End quote. Democracy is a muscle that has to be exercised. Please join me in reviewing your own, renewing your own commitment to freedom through participation in civic life, through helping your neighbor, or through just being kind. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would now call upon our town clerk, Sheila Bailey, for a roll call, please. Councillor Hopkins? Here. Councillor Ludwick? Here. Councillor Mangini? Here. Councillor Pisner? Here. Councillor Santanella? Here. Councillor Ungeyer? Here. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Here. Mayor Crisati? Here. Councillor Despard? Is absent. Councillor Finger? Here. That's nine members present, one absent. The fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the room and to my left and the audience is right. Please exit through the doors, go down the stairs and into the parking lot. Minutes from the preceding me uh, meetings. I have now two sets of minutes uh, to approve, uh, which will be a, vo voice, a voice vote. Is there a motion to approve the special me uh, minute meetings from June 6th, 2022? So moved. Councillor Mangini. Second. And a second, Councillor Santanella. Any discussions, uh, corrections? I sense none. Um, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and uh, opposed? And abstentions, I will have to make one abstention on that. So. On the special meeting, there were eight yeas and one abstention. Next, do I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes from the regular meeting June 6th, 2022? So moved. Councilor Mangini, second. second Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussions or corrections on the minutes? Okay, uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, opposed? and abstentions. Uh, I will have to abstain. Um, there are eight yeas and one abstention for the regular meeting on June 6, 2022. There are no special guests for tonight, and we will move right along to the public communications. Uh, tonight, before we um, are opening public communications, I want to remind everyone that this is a public forum for a discussion on policy issues and we will not entertain personnel matters. And I do reserve the right to revoke the floor from anyone who does not follow these rules. And at this time, we will ask members of the public to come forward to speak and please state your uh, name and address for the record. And for the first round, you'll have five minutes and then three minutes for each uh, sub subsequent round. Okay? Yes. My name is Barbara Gilley. I live on Buchanan Road in Enfield. And I want to speak up in favor of money for the roof for the AMP. I've been donating clothing to the ANP for about six or seven years. 
And uh, while I've been donating, I noticed a lot of people that I recognized, people that worked at Stop and Shop, Big Y, Walgreens, retail stores, and who shop where I shop. I shop at Goodwill. I love Goodwill. And uh, there are a lot of people here in town that work hard and sometimes need some extra help. And uh, especially with families with children. And with the prices going up of gas, heating oil, food, and that's going to continue going up because the price of fertilizer and diesel for their machinery is going up. There's going to be more and more people, not only here in Enfield, but throughout the country, that are going to need a little extra help. And that's what the AMP does. As I said, especially with young children, they outgrow their clothing so much quickly, so quickly, and need different items. And when you're putting most of your money into mortgage, food, gas, and other things, there isn't a lot of money left over. And I've seen the people that work there, very dedicated, always trying to make everything look nice so when people come in, everything looks good. I just believe that an investment of a new roof would reap many, many dividends for all of the people in Enfield. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Good evening. My name is Jessica Soule. I live at 10 Brook Road in Enfield. I am a teacher, fourth grade, at Prudence Crandall School. When Columbine happened in April of 1999, I was a few months away from beginning my student teaching. I heard talk of gun control and reform back then, and I still hear it today, 23 years later. I call my representatives and senators, but I have to focus on what I can change, and that is my own classroom and my own school and my own town. Every teacher that you know has created a plan for themselves for an active shooter in their building. Every teacher you know has walked the outside of their building and looked into their classroom to see how, what can be seen from the outside. Every teacher you know has wondered how fast they can lock their door with shaking hands. Every teacher you know has had a conversation with their students about the spread out method versus the group together method of hiding. Every teacher you know has jumped at the sound of a fire alarm, a te dropped textbook, a slammed door, or a scream from outside. Every teacher you know has hoped and prayed that they will be in the way long enough to save the lives of their students. Every teacher you know keeps their phone on them to call 911 in an event of an emergency. And every teacher you know has considered how hard it will be to keep 20 frightened children quiet long enough. Every teacher you know has had another day after conversation with nervous students returning to school with questions about the latest event. Every teacher that you know. In my hand, I have a copy of an advertisement from Sandy Hook Promise. The top of this states, never again with the date December 14th, 2012. There are 30 school shootings listed here. This does not include shootings at movie theaters, grocery stores, malls, or other places of business. After the shooting in 2018 in Parkland, Florida, my colleagues and I asked for a meeting with the former head of security in Enfield Public Schools. We asked then for five changes to be made to our building to provide more security and more safety for our students. None, not one, of these actions has been taken in the 1,587 days since then. There have been 13 more school shootings since that one. We were told that we were asking financially for too much. The five actions that we asked for are, one, classroom doors that lock from the inside. We are expected to put ourselves in the direct line of fire to secure our classrooms. I literally have to step into the hallway to secure my classroom door. Teachers are responsible for covering the windows on their doors, usually with a curtain and magnetic rod that we pay for to comply with lockdown procedures. Two, mirrored one-way film on the windows and doors, especially in classrooms, hallways, and all entry points of the building. 
Let's find out the costs and time involved for this. Classroom evacuate three, excuse me, classroom evacuation windows that open far enough to safely get my students out. I measured my windows. My windows in my classroom open at an approximate 45 degree angle at a maximum width of nine inches. That's this big. I don't have one single fourth grader that I could get out of that window in an emergency in a space this big. My school does not have doors that open to the outside or appropriately sized windows. There are other schools in the district that do have doors that go to the outside and do have appropriately sized evacuation windows, so why not Crandall? Four, two door entry system that we have at Enfield High School, JFK, Alcorn. Five, concrete blockades at the front entrance of our school. This would be to prevent anyone from using a vehicle to smash through the front entrance and gain entry into our building. Again, none, not one of these changes has been implemented. It hasn't even been discussed, talked about anything since we got shut down. I have read multiple local news articles in the JI. I've read emails, I've read press releases about safety measures that are implemented in our schools since I started working in Enfield Public Schools in 2016. I ask this council, Mayor Crisati, the Board of Ed, Mr. Dresick, and Mr. Longy to consider that what has been done this far is simply not enough. If you want to know how to make our buildings safer, talk to the teachers. Please do not dismiss our requests again. I made this statement to the Board of Education last week on June 14th, and I received an email from one board member who stated, quote, although I cannot go into specifics, I assure you that we are doing everything we can to ensure the safety and security of you and your students. With all due respect, you're not. You are not. If you were, we would have the bare minimum of classroom doors that lock from the inside. If I wanted to be armed at my job, I would have joined the military or I would have followed in my family's footsteps in law enforcement. I am not here to ask this council for tougher gun laws or stricter background checks. I simply want my school building to be better protected. Thank you. Good evening, Art Mullen from 80 Mullen Road. I'm back with part two of uh, the See Something, Say Something report that I started at the last town council meeting on June 6th. I have four points for you tonight. Number one, you may recall that I reported that the 2022 assessment I appealed identified my house as having 2,478 square feet, when actually it was only made up of 1,512 square feet. I remembered from the Ag Committee meeting presentations by the Connecticut Farm Bureau and assessment lawyer that this assessor was known for not updating the records with the appeal board results and that I should verify that the appeal board changes were updated on my field card in the assessor's office where the same problems will come back to me in future years. So last Thursday, I went to the assessor's office and picked up a copy of my current field card. I was dismayed to see that my records have not been changed and my house remains on the books with an incorrect living space of 2,478 square feet. This needs to be corrected. If this has happened to me, I feel this has happened to others. I'd like to see an audit performed that ensures all the appeal board changes are updated and corrected in the assessment records by a specified completion date. Number two, at the last town council meeting, I believe I heard someone say that the assessment minutes and documents had been taken down from the website and public view because they were confusing, included handwriting, and were illegible in places. I pursued a copy of the Enfield Connecticut Board of Assessment Appeals Report on the decisions of appeals of assessments heard in April 2022 and May 2022. I found the 13-page report with 10 exhibits to be plainly written, easy to read, and nothing was illegible to me. This report accurately described the treatment I received from the assessor, and I think this document should be in the public view. Number three, at the last town council meeting, I believe I heard someone say the assessment office was understaffed. At my appeal session, in addition to the assessor, I believe that two additional assessment staff were also in there in attendance. I don't feel that any of these three should have been there, and I suggest that the assessment office is not so much understaffed as it is poorly managed. Number four, 
I believe that my appeal session was recorded by the assessor, as were other appeal sessions. I'd like to know why the appeal sessions were recorded and what's going to happen to these recordings. In conclusion, I don't feel that existing senior town of Enfield staff responsible for assessments is doing a good job and or is properly addressing the issues I have and am experiencing. I am hoping that the town council will actively get involved and take corrective measures. Thanks for listening. Emily McIntosh of 11 Arbor Road. I'm joined with Damon Patno of 11 Arbor Road as well, and Renee Parita of 17 Prue Terrace. Um, came today to comment on some things that are coming up later on in today's agenda with Enfield Culture and Arts. Um, I am the chairman of Enfield Culture and Arts Commission. Um, I've given my time to Enfield Culture and Arts Commission for over eight years, starting off as a volunteer and eventually be being elected as chairman of the commission. I've held my head high, putting transparency, ethics, and our community first. My leadership in this commission has led us to writing and establishing our own mini grant. We have helped bring in opera house players, established the town's first poet laureate, put on or sponsored various art shows, concerts, art installations, and self-sustaining programs for our community. This all goes towards our support and dedication to the residents of Enfield and towards sustainable CT, which allows for the town to apply for grants. We as a commission have asked for support and transparency with our council liaison and town manager. Only once to receive a heads up for clarity before an action was taken. Unfortunately, that first time was today at 2 p.m. Commission members who inquired about our reserve funding of 30,000 being revoked were met with a condescending public scolding. Let me be clear, as a commission member and a resident, it is not only their responsibility to ask questions about funding, but it is their right to inquire about it to whomever, who, whomever they wish. Commission members being punished or treated the way they were by our town manager was a disgrace. What was even more of a disgrace was town council members stating that they did not agree with the town council manager or the town manager, but they would not offer written support. Even more so that I alone, I alone, had to stand up against my local government on behalf of a volunteer commission member and town resident in order to stand on the right side of right. In the last five months, I've spent more time on damage control for the commission due to town politics than I have throughout my multiple reappointments. During this time, I've spent more hours trying to mend relationships, fix problems, and move us forward than I have in my own career. After five months, we still do not have clarity as how the town plans to change our commission so that they can delegate work to its volunteers, nor has ECAC been asked about their input on the upcoming resolution changes. Programming such as movies in the park scheduled for the summer are now being canceled because of reappointments on the docket for tonight are being postponed until a new resolution is established by the town council and town manager's office. I can no longer be part of a commission that is being abused and kept in the dark. If ECAC commission members are not a part of the direction they are being forced into, then maybe the town residents can speak on how they want their money spent. Let the residents decide if 15 to 45,000 of their tax dollars should be spent painting murals on private property down in Thompsonville. Ask the residents how they feel. Is losing program, programming throughout the year worth the 50 cents that they will now save on their taxes? Yet rumors of the town being able to afford giving employees over a grand in bonuses still circulates. This and so many other issues that I have not had the time or energy to rehash right now has led to the mass exodus of a group of volunteers. A group who has dedicated their time, their passion, and their energy to Enfield Culture and Arts for the last decade. With this said, I'm submitting the rescinded request of appointment to ECAC by Renee Merced Parita as a new member. I'm submitting the rescinded request of reappointment to ECAC by Damon Patnow as member and treasurer. I'm submitting the rescinded request of reappointment by ECAC uh, to ECAC by Jennifer Ryan as member and public relations coordinator. Finally, I'm submitting my resignation as ECAC member and chairman. 
The town of Enfield will receive the written re uh, resignations by the end of this week. The remaining members of ECAC not mentioned here have not formally submitted anything in writing to me yet, but have confirmed verbally that you'll be receiving more resignations by the end of this week. I wish the town the best of luck in finding a group as dedicated as the one you are losing now. Thank you for your time. Good night. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Ms. Deputy Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen on the council, administrators, and uh, members of the public. My name is Tom Tyler. I live at 18 Bridge Lane. I'm also a member of the Board of Assessment Appeals, currently serving as its chairman. I'm here to address you on the chaos that was surrounding the entire assessment process this past year. As a preliminary matter, though, I, I think I'd like to clear up some confusion as to what the town's assessment process actually is, how it works, where it starts, and where it ends. Uh, the sources of what I'm about to tell you are found in the Connecticut General Statutes and the Board of Assessment Appeals Handbook entitled, A Guide to Property Tax Administration for Connecticut's Municipal Board of Assessment Appeals, which is written in layman's terms, so it's a lot easier for me and everybody else to understand, so I'm gonna leave that as an exhibit for you if you wish. And um, so after watching the June 6th town council meeting on television, together with rev reviewing some written material that uh, I received and the board received from town administration recently, it became apparent to me that the assessment process needs to be reiterated. And um, it became abundantly clear that it appears the town is trying to create the illusion that it's up to the tax assessor and or the town manager to review BAA decisions and act as the final arbiters in determining which BAA decisions they want to overrule, affirm, or dismiss. And unfortunately for them, but fortunately for the taxpayers and the council, they have it backwards. The tax assessor and the town manager are the town. They're on the same team. They are the town administration. The property owners and taxpayers are the people. And the BAA is the official municipal agency that's designed to serve as the appeal body for taxpayers who believe that the town erred in the valuation of their properties or erroneously denied them exemptions. That's found at page one of this handbook. Uh, numerous statutes, the handbook continues on page five, numerous statutes provide an oversight of the valuation process and it states that a critical part of that oversight is the Board of Assessment Appeals. The Boards of Assessment Appeals are provided by statute to act as an independent body of review for property owners who wish to appeal their assessments after exhausting more informal channels of appeal, such as the assessor, revaluation company, etc. It's important to note, in accordance with Connecticut General Statute 12-111, that a taxpayer makes a formal appeal to the Board of Appeals, not to the tax assessor. And examples of where that's been overstepped this past year, I'll just give you a couple. One is that before the, the appeals even were started, the tax assessor uh, unilaterally attempted to amend the official appeal form that had been approved by the BAA even before I got on there last year. And uh, in so doing, the changes were made more onerous for people to appeal. For instance, requiring them to get an appraisal uh, fully done, completed, and attached with the appeal form, which is similar to, like, if you want to bring a lawsuit against somebody, you want to have your court exhibits all set, clipped onto the lawsuit when you file it, which is a really onerous uh, requirement. Uh, a uh, BAA member noticed it and called them on it, and they retracted it, and so they then reestablished the BAA-approved appeal form that was in use now, 
excuse me, for this year. The other uh, example of the tax assessor thinking he's making decisions instead of the Board of Assessment Appeals is when people would file their appeal, he would decide whether or not it was complete, which usurps the authority of the Board of Assessment Appeals. That's our job, our duty, our responsibility, not his. So once we discovered that, and we don't know how many people he denied that didn't come back, but we do know he did do it, and we uh, chastised him on that, and so then he stopped doing that, so that their job is receive the appeals, or we receive the appeals, give them to us, and we do our legal duty as required by the statute. Another statute, in addition to 12-111, is Connecticut Statute 12-504D. Yes. Five minutes? Wow. Okay, well, I'll see you on the other end. Uh, what did I say that was about some personality? I was just stating facts. Is there something that I said that was wrong? Well, I mentioned about the difficulties we've had as a board right. in terms of some of these people. Am I supposed to? You don't want to hear this? Is that what you're telling me, Mr. Mayor? Just well, as a, a point of I, order, I think it might be most helpful. Um, so, you know, through public comment, people have time to speak. Sounds like uh, your time has is, is, is elapsed, Mr. Tyler. Uh, and I, so, I imagine he would get to speak again. Yes. Just, I don't think it's good to bicker. Okay, well, this, there's the handbook. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward? Start my time. My name is Kevin Riley. I am the owner of 14 Pleasant Street in Thompsonville. Although I'm new to Thompsonville, my family has been in business here for over 65 years. My mother started the Riley School of Dance, and it's now in its third generation. This is a beautiful drawing. Really well done. Well done. There's only one problem with this drawing is that this right here on the other side of the monument is my legal right of way to my property. This building is drawn on my property. So my suggestion tonight, I understand that you're thinking about voting on something on this tonight. My suggestion would be that the town attorney table this for another period of time because this is on my property. Now, someone came to me from environmental development an hour and a half after I put up my signs that my property was for sale. Prior to that, they blew two deals for me, in my opinion. Because the people that gave me a deposit and were very interested in my property, once they got off the phone with the the environmental development, they said, we're no inch longer interested. We want our deposit back. I waited two and a half weeks for the fellows out of Texas 
to come up because they were interested in this property because this property was in the middle of what they were doing. They said, Mr. Riley from Texas, they said, Mr. Riley, we're very interested in this property. We understand that it's a 263,000. We'd be interested at 250,000 would not be out of our reach. Now the first deal was at 150,000. I bought it for 75,000. I took 430 yarders out of that house. I cleaned up that yard. I took down the bushes. I did all of that that you folks are interested in us doing. The only problem I had, I couldn't fix the fence because the town was letting the fence fall down. But in my discussions with these folks, they come over and fix my fence. That was nice of them. But if you think for one second that you're going to vote on this property, that goes through my right-of-way tonight, I would table it because I will have an injunction against it by tomorrow. And I will hold tight. I will not allow you to go through my right-of-way. I will not allow you to take my tenants and tell them, and, and, and Mike Oshasky, who's next to me, a Sober Solutions, a, a Scanner One, that his tenants have to park across the street because they, without regard for me or discussion with me, have made arrangements for me to park across the street over an eight-foot wall at the carpet company over there, Bigelow. So now our tenants have to walk across up Main Street and come into our property. What if I have a problem with my people that have special needs? I have a gal that lives in there who every day has a visit. Every day has a visit. Is that nurse to park across the street? I have another fellow that lives in my house. Every day he has a visit. Should he park across the street, walk around the corner, and come up to my property without any regard of talking to me in regards to this? Excuse me, folks. That is not how business is done. I've been in business. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Ashamed of yourselves, all of you. I will not relinquish this right away for one minute. During demolition, during this, this proposal, during anything. That's my legal right away, and I will hold to it. Thank you for your intentions. Thank you. My name is Maureen Mullen, 1625 King Street, Enfield. Um, many of you may recall me from years ago with a school situation next door. Is the red light on? Yes, it is. A little closer? Thank you. Is that better? Yes. yes. I just okay. want to hear you. Okay. Many of you know me from past experience. Six years of meetings here, just about every month. Three years in court, Superior Court in New Britain. I never want to go through that experience again. But I have to tell you, when I got, when I got the new assessment for our farm property, I was in a state of shock. I just could not believe 
that there was $150,000 added on to the assessment for a piece of swampy woodlands. I couldn't believe it. How could this be happening? It hadn't happened in all the years since, I believe it was 1905 is when our family acquired that property. We've not changed things over the years. Maybe crops have changed, trees have changed, things like that. But I just couldn't believe. How could that be? So I was calling to um, find out, you know, at the assessor's office, and tell me if I'm saying anything that I shouldn't be saying, but I heard that it was assumed that each piece of farm property contained a two-acre building lot, and that was the basis for the increase. I said, build where? It's all wet. Tell me where. Someone, I don't know if I can say this, someone in the office looked at a map and said, well, it would be very, very irregular, but Maybe you can get uh, something from another department in the town that says it can't be built on. And I thought, where am I going to do this? You know, what in the world is going on? We never, never did this in all of our years. And we're all family members that have owned the farm all these years. So I decided that I'd better put in an appeal, which I did. And I later was able to meet with um, two of the administrators here who were very helpful, you know, very kind and all. But again, once I was told your program is out of, your property is out of 490, it's not going back. It's not going back. And it was like, no matter what I thought to say, I said, well, I can't change anybody else's mind like this. What in the world can I do? So then we had a meeting with the Farm Bureau representative who explained Public um, Act 490 to all those who were present, including people who were here so that they would understand what was going on. That was good, and there was supposed to be a follow-up meeting for farmers and others with people in the town. That didn't occur as a group meeting. I was invited back for a meet and greet, which was very quick and really, at that meeting I found out that three business days later, we were scheduled to have our appeal. I'd never gotten anything in the mail about that, so that was very strange to me. And. I decided that I better put in another form, which I did. I had put in one of the uh, appeal forms February 18th, explaining, you know, about the building lot and all. But I said, you know, I'm not feeling well. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the meeting that's going to be coming up in April. So on March 18th, I put in a second form. These are both stamped by the assessor's office that they did receive them and all, and just saying I didn't know if I would be up to it and other family members could take my place and we definitely wanted to stay in Public Act 490. There was no question about that in my mind. Well, later on, uh, my brother did go to the, the appeal meeting. I wasn't able to that day. And we did hear the results that we were, um, we were granted our appeal, which was, thank goodness, a good thing but also wondered, you know, what's, what's happening here? How come, where did, this, where did this paper go? How come they didn't know that I might not be there? Why were they surprised that I wasn't there myself? So I checked and I did get a certified copy of the uh, file that the BAA had and my copy, which I have here, was not included in that folder. I don't know why, but it should have been, by my opinion. Um, and like I said, I had it stamped in. I think I can tell you the name of the person, but I'm not going to, who did this all. That, it's a very helpful person, always. But I just said, this, this is not a good thing. And just recently, I found out um, that our, our code has not been changed. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the new assessment after the Board of Appeal. So what happens when we get the tax bill? What is it going to be based on? Is it going to be based on the figure I see on this paper, or is it going to be based on what the Board of Appeal told us it would be? It's very puzzling to me. I don't know all the ins and outs of government and departments and all. I knew where I worked. I did that for government for many years. But I don't know how this system works. I just know I don't want to go through the same situation that I went through for the six years and the three years. I just don't have the energy. I have de determination, and somebody may have to push me up here. But I'll just have to say, I want to have things straightened out so that everybody in town, you know, feels that they're getting the right kind of service and all. I don't want to go attacking anybody, 
most of you know that from my previous experiences. I like to work with people, not against them. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions later, please ask. Okay. Thank you. Lori Longy, 1427 Enfield Street. Um, it was said at the last meeting, see something, say something. If you're not familiar with the field cards, this may be a bit confusing, but I will try to explain it as simply as I can. As a member of the BAA, we saw an unusual pattern of things on the back of the field cards, which is why our report was called the Creation of Fountain Youth Formula which was our words because it made properties get younger as they aged. If no improvements had been made to real property, we saw that the effective year condition um, magically got newer or younger. These changes artificially increased assessment values. Simply explained, if your effective year was 1980 and we are five years older, your property should not be five years younger unless you did improvements, upgrades, or enhancements to the property. We saw this on so many cards, we started calling it the fountain of youth. But this fountain of youth does affect your house or building value and what you are paying taxes on. After all the hearings and votes were taken, I went down to get each council member's field card so I could explain the effective year on the back of your property card. And that's when, to my shock, the effective year was deleted on all of your cards. This bothered me so much, I went back to the town hall to pay and get more field cards of the properties that came in for appeals. And later that day, I went down to get even more cards. All of these cards were now missing this critical information. It seems after the BAA issued our report that discussed the formula of the fountain of youth, this information is suppressed or hidden from the public. It is my belief that this can only be done by vision and or the assessor. Instead of looking into the obvious problem of manipulation of numbers, Enfield just removes it so no citizen or business in town can see it any longer. This alteration of public documents, especially during an appeal season, should cause a grave concern to every taxpayer in Enfield, especially the town council. Let me explain a little further. Anyone can appeal the BAA decisions for up to two months after we rendered a decision. So when somebody requests their cards, there is now different information found on the 2020 cards. The provisions of the Connecticut General Statute um, does allow for a clerical omission or mistake that do not include errors of substance. Not only have the 2020 cards been altered by suppressing information, and remember, we already have this information and proof of it from the appeals, and magically, poof, now it's gone. But under further review in sampling of the cards that I reprinted from 6722, some that came in for appeals, it appears the values have changed from the 2020 cards. This was another very troubling discovery. Remember, the BAA is adjusting the year of 2021, not 2020. So you may ask, why is this a problem? If the value is less than the town of Enfield charged them for their taxes, then perhaps the town has to refund these people and businesses their money back. If the taxpayer paid less money in their taxes than they did in 2020 from two years ago, do they now owe more money? If the grand list was changed either way, then are the grand list numbers that were certified still correct? This certainly raises a question. Is it an accident or on purpose? Either way, this could be a huge problem for the town. I don't have the answers, and I don't know the whys. But if you see something, you should say something. And it took me a whole afternoon of my time just to get all this information, to go through the cards and look it over, just to be able to explain it to you tonight. So I don't think anyone should be made feeling bad for informing the council of potential problems. 
So I had brought an example, and I had a two print dates, the 4-8 hearing card with a, um, a RCN on the back of $811,000 for one property, and then the 6-7 print date is now $855,531. The numbers appear to be manipulated with depreciation, and now the effective year is deleted on all the cards. I don't have enough of time or amount of new cards to know how many of these values were changed, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. And I have a copy for every board member and one for the secretary. Thank you. Okay, Lucian. Lucian Lefebvre, 54 Kimberly Drive, also Vice Chairman of the Enfield Veterans Council. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make the last meeting, so I'm here tonight to give my thoughts and thanks to the community for attending our Memorial Day Parade. It was well attended. Uh, I appreciate the attendance of local officials, state officials that participated. And, you know, the, the most thanks to, to the people that lined Route 5 coming up to the town green and the ones that did attend the wreath laying ceremony and the speech at the town green. To me, that's the most important part of the whole thing. But I just want to make the town manager's office and the town council aware. Planning the parade is not an easy task. I go to all the different departments within the town. The cooperation I get is unbelievable. You all need to know that. From Enfield PD to buildings and grounds to the town office to help us advertise has been phenomenal support. It, it takes a lot to do this and I this year I became aware that just the traffic control portion of the parade, the town actually has to go to the state to get permission because it's a, a state road, not a town road. So another lesson learned in my, for me, uh, buildings and grounds have cooperated immensely. You know, whatever I ask for, they, su they supply and ask me, what more can we do for you? And as silly as it may sound, down to the proper placement of a porta pot <laughs> They go out of their way to make sure it's placed in the right place that we wanted it. And uh, you guys just need to know the cooperation that the Veterans Council gets in putting these parades on for Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And I just want to thank the, all the town employees that help us out, the support from the town and from the town council. Thank you. Donna Dubanowski, 23 Betty Road. My time's going to start talking about the Freedom of Information Act. And as I'm going to state different Connecticut gen general statutes, the term referred to as CGS. CGS 1-200, paragraph 5, definition of public records or files means any recorded data or information relating to the conduct of the public's business prepared, owned, used, received, or retained by the public agency, or to which a public agency is entitled to receive a copy by law or or contract under section 1-218. Whether such data or information be handwritten, typed, tape recorded, printed, photostatted, photographed, or recorded by any other method. 
CGS 1-225, formerly Section 1-21, posting online requirements of minutes and agendas, meetings of government agencies to the public, recording of votes, schedule of agenda or certain meetings to be filed and posted on websites, notice of special meetings, executive sessions, A, the meetings of all public agencies except executive sessions, as defined in Subdivision 6 of Section 120, Dash 200 shall be open to the public the votes of each member of any such public agency upon any issue before such public agency shall be reduced in writing and made available for public inspection within 48 hours and shall be recorded in the minutes of the session at which taken not later than seven days after the date of the session to which such minutes refer such minutes shall be available for public inspection and posted on the such public agency internet website if available except that no public agency of a political subdivision of the state shall be required to post such minutes on the internet website each public agency shall make keep and maintain a record of the proceedings of its meetings cgs 1-2-2 10, formerly Section 119, access to public records, exempt records. A, except as otherwise provided by any federal law or state statute, all records maintained or kept on file by any public agency, whether or not such records are required by any law or by any law, rule, or any rule or regulation shall be public records and every person shall have the right to, one, inspect such records promptly during regular office or business hours, two, copy of such records in accordance with subsection G of section 1-212, or three, receive a copy of such records in accordance with section 1-212. Any agency rule or regulation or part thereof that conflicts with provisions of this subject, subsection or diminishes or curtails in any way the rights granted in this subsection shall be void. Each such agency shall keep, keep and maintain all public records in the custody at the regular office or place of business in an acceptable place and there is no such office or place of business with the public records pertaining to such agency shall be kept in the office of the clerk of the political subdivision in which such public agency is located or the secretary of state as the case may be. Any certified record hereunder attested to as a true copy by the clerk, chief, chief or deputy of such agency, and, sh and such of other person designated or empowered by law so to so act shall be competent evidence in any court of this state of the facts contained therein. CGS 1-240, formerly section 1-21K, any person willfully knowingly and with intent to do so destroys mutilates or otherwise disposes of any public record without the approval required under section 1-18 or unless pursuant to chapter 47-871 or alters any public record shall be guilty of a class a misdemeanor and each such occurrence shall be shall constitute a separate offense with that the baa minutes were submitted on time by our recording secretary they were not posted by the town until the end of may those minutes after finally being posted extremely late were then removed altered mishandled or respectfully requested they be amended before adoption by the town manager exhibit three as most of you are aware the board of assessment appeals minutes of may 28th I have exhibits, exhibits A and B were removed. While researching our minutes, I found that under the download tab of the drop down menu, it brings up a previous versions options. Exhibits three and four, or exhibit C, four, the four form minutes, and exhibits D and E show that the number of pages for those minutes were changed from 14 pages to 12 pages. Exhibit F shows how the 322 minutes, the 310 minutes were attached. Exhibit G shows the 411 minutes where the 511 minutes were attached. While they may be back to the original status now on the first page under the minutes, mine is of course the 62 pages of the 528 minutes not being posted. Posted. The previous versions show that they were edited, pages were deleted, minutes attached to the wrong dates. These are all violations as I read them of the Freedom of Information Act. I respectfully submit all eight pages of exhibits. Thank you.
the assessor or the assessor's office. Uh, Jessica, the lady that te teaches at Prudence Crandall, I mean, that's where I first started teaching. And I remember Reverusi, myself, Underwood, we used to have kids going in and out those windows. So when they redid the school, they must have made them smaller. But as far as the locks on the door, you gotta remember you're gonna have to put lock, be able to lock it from the outside and the inside. So it's not uh, just one way. I'm here, um, I'm going to ask you to have a little patience with me tonight because like Joey said once in a while, you're probably not gonna like what I have to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The main purpose for me speaking tonight is because of what transpired at the last town council meeting and not filling the council seat previously held by Joey Bosco. First, two of you stated you could not vote for Jim because Jim wasn't really the issue, nor is he the issue tonight. It's the process that's, the, that's in question. Because you didn't like an answer he gave when questioned about grooming and pedophiles. And for the love of me, I don't know, have a clue as to why that or some of the other questions you asked were even asked. Now I'm gonna ask you guys some questions. I know we can't have a back and forth conversation, so I'll ask you the questions, or ask my questions, and in your heads, you can answer yes, no, or I don't know. Do you believe any teacher or teachers have or had had relationships with their students or even none ended up actually marrying one? Do you believe there are any pedophiles at Disneyland or Disney World? Even after a number of arrests have been made? Do you believe any national public officials or people of notoriety ever visited Jeffrey Epstein's so-called Pleasure Island and had sex with underage kids? Now getting to our school system, or for that matter, any system the size of our school system. It was said that if grooming or pedophiles were present in our system, the police or the state police would be doing an investigation. Now let me ask you these questions, and again, answer them to yourselves, yes, no, or I don't know. Do you believe any teachers have had relationships with other teachers? Do you believe any administrator has ever had a relationship with teachers? Do you believe any teacher, administrators, or central office personnel have ever been caught with child porn on their computer? Do you believe there are any teachers who have used illegal drugs above the potency of marijuana? Do you honestly believe people in, involved in education are perfect? To those people who teach in Enfield, they do the best job they can. They were and are some of the best people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing and teaching with. Some are better than others, but they all try to teach to the best of their abilities. Teachers are no different than ordinary people. We are in essence a compilation or a cross-section of society. Another comment that bothered me to a degree in the questioning of prospective candidates was, do you believe the last election was legitimate? With the harvesting of ballots? With the use of drop boxes? With ballots being counted after poll watchers were made to leave? With machines being questioned as to how the votes were being tabulated? With results from precincts 100, 100% 100 in favor of one candidate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can see why some people question the election, revolts in some, election results in some states. Just look at our last two gubernatorial elections here in Connecticut. Are you telling me eight years ago everything was above board in Bridgeport? Four years ago, did everything go all, uh, copacetic in New Haven? And then it was said that a basic tenet of our democracy is that you can't believe that elected or public officials would lie, right? From our presidents, I'm using the plural, to members of the House and Senate, to the media, to elected state officials, do you honestly expect the public to believe that many of these people don't lie, or at best, they're masters of twisting the English language? 
An old friend of mine, Dick Crisati, Uncle Dick to you, that's where I'll come back then. <laughs> Is there anybody else that would like to approach the council? Good evening. Scott DeLorge, 336 George Washington Road. I just want to start off. We uh, built a house in 2018 over off uh, George Washington Road, and we actually bought the property off of, of Cindy. I'm not sure if you remember that, but awesome. Um, I didn't want to start off by I was a general contractor for that job and to build my own home, and it was a, a, a tall task. And I knew I had to come down to the town of Enfield and, and deal with all the employees and, and the staff. Uh, and I was told over the years, you know, it was a tough task to do that. But I want to say that everything that I dealt with with every town employee down here was fantastic. From uh, Linda Campbell showing me all the departments, uh, introduced me to the uh, inspectors that would be coming over to my home. Uh, everything turned out great. I can't ask for a better uh, experience dealing with the town of Enfield. I'm building my home over there. Um, in 2020, uh, the house, we wanted to put the rest of the land into farm. Uh, we met with Della over there, and she came over and she introduced herself, very professional. Uh, we spoke with her. She put us in the right direction on what to do and how to do it. And in 2020, we were approved for 490. Uh, 2021 came and the new tax assessor came to the property and um, introduced himself and then uh, the next words out of his uh, introduced myself as well and the next words that came out was the, the, the farm status is gone I was a little blown away by that since we uh, you know took us about a year or two to get in into 490 and just like that gone I asked how he came up with that uh, determination he said the week before he had came to the property nobody was home so um, he just took upon himself to walk the property and make that determination um, himself, which I found pretty odd because everyone that's came to my home during this process is either called or waited for me in the, in the driveway, and we did this all together. So I was a little shocked by that. Um, I asked him uh, if, who gave him permission. He said he's the town assessor. He doesn't need that permission. Um, the next uh, thing I asked him, what, what are my uh, options here? And basically he said, the only option you have is to reapply. So then, you know, I'm supposed to listen to this gentleman. He's the, the assessor. So to, in my says, okay, great. But in the back of my, my mind, I'm saying, uh, this doesn't seem right. So we were sp speaking a little bit more. We asked him a couple more questions about the vision. Uh, and he said, that's all a vision thing. You have to take it up with vision, the, the assessment. Um, then what happened was he started speaking to me also about my business, my landscape business. He asked me about my equipment, uh, other things that were on the property. He started to explain to me that he was uh, a, a big landscaper at some point. He owned a business. He uh, used to have certain equipment that ran his business. And I kind of see where he was going with this. He's trying to see where I was going, mention what I had for equipment compared to my declaration uh, for my personal property. So I kept it short. I didn't want it to keep it, uh, keep engaging in it anymore. Um, and the conversation ended. Um, I tried to get a hold of Nick uh, we, to speak to him about my uh, encounter with him. He did reach back to me. Uh, we kind of played phone tag, and we weren't. I wasn't able to touch base for them for every reason. He's busy. I'm busy. But he did try to get back to me like three times. Then eventually, I went down to the town hall. Uh, excuse me, to the town to pay a tax bill. Spoke to my lady down there that I've been dealing with many years, uh, paying the tax bill. So I told her the story. And she said, Scott, she goes, you can absolutely uh, appeal uh, the, the 490. You can appeal the assessment from Vision with the town of Enfield. I thought this is something that the, the new tax assessor should have told me the day he had came to my home. Uh, he did not for whatever reason. But also, also the day that I was down there was the last day I could get that appeal in with the BAA. So I had to fill that form out with her right then and there. And as I was doing that, it was during the COVID time. So I wasn't wearing my mask correctly. And he had gotten up from his desk in the back and he came out, said to me, could I, you know, could I put my mask above my nose? And I said, yes, sure, no problem. But it was a little stern, it wasn't very polite. 
And uh, when I was done talking to the young lady at the desk, getting my appeal paperwork in just before the deadline, uh, I was walking out and I said to him, I said, was there a reason why that I had to wear my mask correctly, but nobody else in this room is even wearing a mask? And it's clearly just stated to me, my building, my rules. And I stopped right there and I said, sir, this is the town of Enfield's building, not yours. Got a little quiet, finished my little thing, got out, went out to the car. I don't know if you noticed the building over there. You can see a window through. And basically, I understood that the young lady got in trouble for actually helping me out when I spoke to her that night. And I think that was very unfair because all she did was help me. And if she did not help me, I would not have gotten back. I would not have gotten to the BAA appeal process, which saved me almost $200,000 in assessment fees. And that's incredible. And that's sad because if I didn't get that appeal in, Sky, time's up. I would have been stuck with that 200,000 assessment. Thank you. You're welcome. Peter, a reminder, three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you for giving us this time. Still ticked off at the Board of Ed. Um, okay, so an old friend of mine, Dick Crisati, Uncle Dick to you, uh, a state rep for many years, a Democrat through and through. He used to contribute to my campaign for the three times I ran for the Board of Ed and got elected on pain of death not to reveal his contributions. He once told me, the worst level of government you can be involved in is local politics. If you don't already know, you'll soon know what he meant. Another comment that dealt with the process of how vacated seats should be filled. I believe it's that the town charter speaks to the issue, but I could be wrong. And I, the idea of having a special election would be costly, would have an extremely low turnout and would go against precedent. I don't believe that counselor who brought this up really thought the idea through or just didn't realize how the filling of a vacant seat was handled. I've lived in Enfield for 45 years and only once do I know of where a proposed candidate whose party's seat became vacant and a nomination was put forward, that nominee was not con confirmed. And that one time that happened, it was done by the Republicans. It was a major mistake. They opened the door for what you just did at the last meeting. There is a process to be followed. You, the Democrats, followed the process. It's your reasoning that I find in fault. Then there's the reason, reasoning to vote because Councilor Crisati wasn't present. He could have called in for that part of the meeting when the vote was to take place. And the comment, I wasn't aware that there was going to be a vote tonight. I felt blindsided. Don't you guys communicate with each other? One councilman actually said he was, not, he was voting no because it had taken a political tone. My question to you would be, who made it political? The vote to appoint Jim. Vote to appoint Jim, move to the next item on the agenda, and keep going. That's all you had to do. To the counselor who was really caught in the middle as to how to vote, you could have abstained. And to the assertion that each party always asked for three names to be submitted to the majority for consideration to fill a vacancy, going back to that counselor who made that statement about the lie that you can't believe they would lie, that comment about submitting three names was a lie. Finally, I would like to publicly acknowledge, acknowledge the one Democrat who had the courage and conviction to vote in a non-political way to fulfill Joey's wish. Thank you, Mr. Finger. Speak faster. 
Okay, just to finish where I was on, uh, I was going over the statutory scheme for uh, assessments and how it's determined and on who makes the decisions. So I was at the point where um, I had just talked about Connecticut General Statute 12 504 D, which says the Board of Assessment Appeals, not anybody else, must hear appeals of persons claiming to be aggrieved by the actions of the tax assessor. And then um, the other statute I want to refer to is 12 113, which says that only the Board of Assessment Appeals has the power to take appeals from taxpayers, review, and correct the work of the assessors. And um, one of the, the issues that came up during our hearings was we heard from about, well, several, several individuals that uh, complained to the town manager, and she entertained their complaints. She was very polite with them. And uh, when they came to see us, they, according to them, they said that she listened to their grievances, she took, um, uh, reviewed their evidence and their documents, took physical custody of the documents, and um, then indicated to them, or at least they thought, it was going to be turned over to BAA at their hearings. And when the hearings occurred, we knew nothing of this until each of these people was telling us the same story. And the documents, uh, we told them uh, that we didn't have any of their documents. The important part of this is, if you don't have documents, you don't have any evidence, um, you lose. So what uh, Lori and Donna did is rearrange schedules so that these people could be accommodated to come back again. And uh, the only documents we finally were able to get was on uh, one appeal, it was the Moose Club, and they had about 400 pages of documents. We were not provided a copy. Um, we were shown finally the original documents, but told that we could only read them during our hearings. So we took Lori off of the hearings, had her spend a couple of hours reading all these so that during deliberations we could um, uh, assimilate all the information and then make an informed intelligent decision, which we did. But without those documents, those people would have lost. And uh, that would have been unfair because they're a tax exempt organization. And um, so anyway, I don't want to waste any more time on that. Then um, I did want to say that uh, with regard to this handbook, uh, it does say at page 11 too, it's the Board of Assessment Appeals who decides to accept or reject an appeal application if it's incomplete or if any of the items are missing or if it's received after the deadline. That's at page 11. And in summary, uh, at page 5, it does say uh, that assessment review in Connecticut, quote, relates to procedures that ensure property valuations are just and equitable. An extended and involved process, it begins with the assessor and ends with the Board of Assessment Appeals. We don't report back to the town manager or the tax assessor to overturn our appeals. We are the ones that review the information, not them. And then um, with that, I did want to make one comment, Mr. Mayor. I actually think uh, that what you did to me has a chilling effect on my free speech and that it's not in your rules or regulations. Never have I seen it before at a council meeting where somebody was chastised for telling the truth about any one of the officers or officials. There is a rule you have that says you can't be disrespectful. I do not believe I was being disrespectful. I was being truthful. And that's something Tyler, the town of needs. Your time is Thank up. you very Thank much. You. Thank you. relinquishing the time. Okay. Lori Longhi, 1427 Enfield Street. Uh, the BAA would like to set the record straight as it appears that the administration was incorrect in her statement during the last town council meeting that the BAA failed to do something which created a fine for the town of Enfield. Um, she was 
wasn't specific identifying the fine, but OPM does have a sheet listing all the fines. In an appeal year, the BAA for cause shown sends in writing to the chief executive officer, which is the town manager, a request for an extension. The chairman did this request on March 28, 2022. After the grand list has been examined and corrected by the BAA, the assessor sends an abstract list to the secretary of OPM before the first day of May. M13 and an M13A of which each is a $100 fine. The fine I think she was referring to. Attached is a copy of the OPM policy um, schedule of forms for the assessor, and there is not one form on that list for the BAA to complete. And for the OPM site, you actually have to have a login access to any of these forms. The BAA has no access. It was the assessor that apparently did not file or complete these required forms, which caused the town to get the $200 fine. I would hope that the administration was just misinformed about the fines and wasn't casting aspersions on the BAA. I am submitting a copy of this OPM form to support my statement. It seems lately by some of the comments made by the administration that the public, the citizens, board members, and businesses are regarded less than the others, since she won't tolerate anything bad said about her staff. But I ask the council, is this the impression that we want to give our community? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Riley, for giving me a, his three minutes. And I, I did want to make some additional comments or two about the June 6th public speakers, uh, because they described some experiences with the tax assessor and the tax assessment process passionately and in detail. And it sounded like an unnecessarily painful process that needs to be addressed. Um, the town manager's response was very disappointing to me to say the least. I think it was a callous disregard to not mention anything about the pain and suffering of these people that, that spoke. Marie did acknowledge uh, their, their suffering, and they're the people that elect you that you're supposed to represent and serve. So the town manager's response um, basically was that she was going to, she delayed censoring uh, she delayed, she censored and suppressed public records of our public records because she disagreed with it. And um, also that she said she'd maybe repost it sometime after she figured out how to rewrite our minutes, none of which is legal. But apparently nobody else is, cares about it because it's been two weeks and still um, lots of things aren't, aren't back. We did f file a... Um, a supplemental report this afternoon that I'll send all of you a copy of on uh, an appeal relating to uh, letters that we received from the uh, tax assessor and uh, in conjunction with the town manager. The only other thing I want to say is that um, we were criticized and the town manager angrily proclaimed, quote, I will not tolerate the BAA or other people speaking earlier, casting aspersions on the tax assessor. We didn't cast any aspersions. We told cold, hard facts that were documented by reality. And uh, one of them, I, I only have time for one tonight, but this is where uh, the tax assessor sent out a letter to everyone about the st saying, the State Motor Vehicle Department has notified our office that you have recently registered the below-listed vehicle in the town of Enfield. I had submitted a redacted letter with the initial report, and I have one I'm going to pass around to each of you tonight. So these, these letters, in reality, uh, did not come from the state of Connecticut. They were actually uh, a concoction of the tax assessor. It never happened. 
He knew full well that his state notice assertion was false, and yet he used it as a predicate to launch an inquisition basically against scores of unsuspecting businesses and property owners regarding hundreds of motor vehicles for information they would not otherwise have had to dig up and turn over. We didn't cast that aspersion. If that's an aspersion, he did it, not us. We're just reporting. So uh, anyway, I don't think I have any more time, but um, I wish I did. And actually, that's probably why I encourage you to open up a council oversight investigation to find out what happened and get to the bottom of it. Because if you don't correct it, it's going to get worse. And you're going to have a lot more people back here uh, once they get their tax bills. But thank you for listening to me. And thanks again, Mr. Riley, for the three minutes. Is there anybody else that would like to approach the council? Mr. T. Katz, and then we'll have you. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. A lady tonight talked about school security, and that's what I'm talking about. People in the past have asked what measures have been taken to secure our schools. And the only answer they ever get, well, it's secret. We can't reveal all the security measures. But apparently, all the, uh, the sc schools don't seem secure after tonight. I asked about the front doors of the Enfield High School, which in the 60s, a car drove right through the front doors. But there's no barriers there in the front doors. All the hospitals in the state of Connecticut are required to have barriers in the front doors because people have driven through the front doors at the hospitals. So I think we should relook at this and have a meeting on what security measures are completed in the school system. Apparently, there's fire violations in the Prudence Crandall School because you're supposed to have two exits. And, only, and the, the schools only have, the classrooms only have one exit. In the, in the last incident in the United States, the police couldn't find the keys to get into the school. And, and, all, and about a half hour later, they bring the keys over to the police. Is this, is this happening in Enfield? That's my question. We should relook at the school security question, the police chief, on what measures have been taken and see if the schools are safe. Because if there's an incident, it's gonna, it's gonna pay dearly in the school system. Thank you. Donna Dubinowski, 23 Betty Road. We scheduled during our March 10th meeting the hearing schedule for the month of April to be on Monday and Wednesdays from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. On March 11th, the board chairman received an email from the assessor's office. It reads, I'm going to post the meetings, but the town has informed me that no town employee would be able to take minutes during the normal course of the workday. I can come at 5 and continue to schedule the hearings, do the prep work, and transcribe the minutes. This year, we will record all audio of all hearings. This will allow us to be able to transcribe any missing notes. I'm sorry for any inconvenience this may cause. That came from the assistant assessor. The first week of our hearings, there were three town employees that included the assessor himself, 
recording the hearings, which started at 1 p.m. on Monday and Wednesdays. I estimate about 30 hours of them sitting in our hearings during the first week alone. The town manager in the last meeting stated the department was overworked and understaffed. The assessor should have been, should never have been in the room to begin with, let alone recording the town residents and us. It was to say the least contentious because of their failing to abide by the Board of Assessment Appeals Handbook on page 26, and the assessor should not be in the room during hearings and our specific rules and regulations regarding taping of the hearings. Being on this board for the last nine years, the treatment that I went through and what I heard from the residents who either met with the assessor or had any contact on their property, that kind of aggressive behavior is not how we treat people in Enfield. When I heard the testimony from these people, it was detailed and though they didn't know what others were, have testified to, it was very consistent in the treatment and it revealed a pattern by this assessor. We too are lifetime residents in this town. And I find this type of behavior of any type of town employee to be truly unacceptable. I can tell you I have never felt so under siege while trying to he do hearings and with recorders, the assessor off in the office at the time, and like I said before, having three people from the town employees in there recording and we couldn't have, we were told we couldn't have one employee to assist us with our hearings until after 5 p.m. So what happened? Why were they all of a sudden all available from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. all week? There was a lot of stress on the residents and on this board, and I can tell you there was absolutely no reason for it. It was terrible and something needs to be done, and I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Is there a third time? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys for your patience tonight. I mean, I know it's hard sitting up there and getting hammered. Um, but you should be commended for giving everybody time to speak. That was very, very good of you. And I think all the problems that we're facing right now are being caused by two people. Neither one lives in this town. Lori Longy, 1427 Enfield Street. The assessor had all these sticky notes that were copied into the appeal sheets that were given to us at each hearing. The BAA did not ask for these notes. They were totally unsolicited. I do not have the answer, but were they there to influence us? Remember, the full BAA cannot meet with the assessor unless it's a scheduled meeting in the open to the public. However, these notes were on the top page of each appeal sheet for all of us to read. Even though the town manager said at the last meeting that she was not prepared to discuss the assessor issues with the council, she just happened to have a spreadsheet and these same sticky notes, messages, as her talking points for 10 minutes. But after hearing her read a few of them, I knew exactly what they were and who wrote them. Was it proper to have them on the appeals form without informing the appellant? I don't have that answer yet. Since the BAA conducted the hearings and received testimony, wouldn't it have been helpful to find out what the results of those sticky notes actually were? As one of the three members that heard from the appellants and saw the assessor's sticky notes, our first job is to fact find. The board chose to write the report decisions of appeals assessments heard in April 2022 and decided in May of 2022 to inform you and the public. The question the council should be asking is, how does someone who claims to know so much continue to make so many errors? Is it coincidental or on purpose? Thank you.
Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Mr. T. Katz. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate. Uh, every year I go to uh, to have my uh, auto automobile tax uh, reassessed because of high mileage for the business that I'm in. And my daughter does the same thing. But there's a problem. Every year, you never know when it's going to be. Uh, two years ago, I missed out on it because when I went over in July, they said they have it at the end of September. Well, they had it out in the parking lot in the beginning of September, and the second week when I went over to the, to the tax office, oh, we already had it. You lose out. Last year, I, I went to the tax office the first week of September, and they says, oh, it's next week or next Thursday. I don't know how we're going to get how these people are going to be notified. Nobody is notified. Maybe it's in a public record, but you can't. It's it's so small you can't even read it in the newspaper. So there's got to be some form to uh, to notify people about getting an appeal on their on their taxes on their automobiles. So I think that's something that has to be looked at and has to be corrected because it, nobody seems to know when it's going to be. Till the, the week before or a day before, so these people, these people, it's got to change. You know, p people are entitled to, to uh, uh, get their taxes re reduced if the, if it's legitimate, but they don't get a chance sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Last one, I promise. Donna Dubinowski, 23 Betty Road. I want to talk about vision government, vision government solutions. Now, the town has been using vision as a company to do our revaluations. This company, in my personal, in my 20 plus years of real estate experience, is nothing more than a data manipulator. The formulas that were used to adjust our land and our neighborhood assessments, I feel, are not accurate to the real sales data for the town of Enfield. My personal experience with this company of going for a hearing, the experience was to say the least, not what I thought or what she expected. As I mentioned that my neighbor's house and mine were very similar homes, yet mine was higher than theirs, after a back and forth and a discussion, the response from Vision was, so do you want me to increase your neighbor's assessment? I was shocked to say the least. When I mentioned that, I now understand when people come into the Board of Assessment Appeals that they're mad after their Vision appraisal hearing. She stood up, screamed at me, and said I should have told her that I sat on the Board of Assessment Appeals. She stormed back into the office of the assessor's office, stayed in there for a few minutes. She came back in and told me, I'm not lowering yours, but if you want, I can increase your neighbors. I stood up, told her to have a nice day, and left. She was furious and stormed back into the assessor's office. When I left the hearing, there was no change to be made to my field card. It states right on there, hearing, no change. As my street card, and I have the example, shows, there is a slight change made by vision. My old style kitchen, it was changed to average. And trust me, today my kitchen is still old style. They also changed my effective year date from 1984 to 1989. So it increased my assessment by $2,000 when that was supposed to be a no change. This pattern was repeated often in numerous hearings this spring. When I learned through the reevaluation what Vision did, the town and the Enfield of Enfield should not be doing business with them. Whatever we're paying them is way too much for the faulty information that they're producing. Please look into and perform an audit on the town's assessor's system and the revaluation company, Vision Government Solutions. Thank you again. I am done for the evening. Is there anybody else that would like? We could have uh, parts three minutes. 
So our policy and procedures yeah. state clearly, and, and the mayor has been very nice about it, that you get two rounds. First is five minutes, and then the second time is only three. And technically, we should limit public communications to an hour. Now, he has let everybody talk more than twice, and I think that is a consideration that he has done. But we're not going to go four, five, six rounds. So. So even when somebody gives up theirs to me, you don't let me speak, but everybody else. Correct. Speaks. Correct. Yeah, I, got yeah. I think I get it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Public communications are closed. <clears throat> Councilor communications. Uh, Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Uh, just briefly. Um, Councilman Hopkins did mention the Juneteenth event that we um, honored and celebrated yesterday on the green. Today is actually the holiday, but just to remind people to let's um, be uh, aware of other people and to be respectful. And I think we all had a good time that did show up at the celebration. It was very well put together. Uh, Fourth of July celebration is coming up. I would encourage everyone to attend. It's really going to be a great event this year, <clears throat> seeing that we did uh, skip a couple of years due to COVID. So the Fourth of July committee is working extremely hard, as they always have been. And I guarantee it's going to be a wonderful event. Finally, to our, to our mayor, to our town staff, I got a report <clears throat> that there was a handicapped porta potty on the green and it was removed and they were looking for it yesterday at the event so i don't know whether that is a pardon the expression fluid issue where it comes and goes but should, shouldn't we um, consistently keep a handicapped porta potty on the premises for people that um, are somewhat compromised with mobility so i just want to put that out there Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Fager. Good evening. Uh, first thing is, I want to thank all the people who sent me emails and texts on my phone um, from last week. I really do appreciate that. Um, and the Bosco, the Bosco family sent me a nice letter. And um, I really, really want to think about that. One of the things that I want to say is, when I was a kid and I had dirty laundry, my mother always washed it and got rid of it. Thank you. Councillor Pisner. Good evening. Um, I would like to start with Jessica, our teacher. Um, I'm in agreement. I have a daughter who's a teacher and I have a granddaughter in the school system. And I do think our schools should be safe. And I give our NVOPD, I believe they are doing all they can. However, we also have a joint facilities, and I'm wondering if we can't do some type of an inventory. As she said, there are some schools that are fine, and we have other schools that might be missing. So maybe we need to do an inventory of our schools and see what schools might be missing a door that locks from inside and out and the windows. We may find that some of our schools are fine and some of our schools aren't, but I think maybe we do owe it. I do believe we owe it to our teachers, our students, um, and all the staff that's there and our residents to make sure that our schools are safe. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, I don't know where to start. I'm, I am, I am, I, I am beyond, beyond with this dealing, with people coming and complaining over and over again. And I will say that the people who sit on our Board of Appeals are long time good standing citizens in this town. This board is not made up of people that were just came up and knocked on a door. Attorney Tyler so well respected in this town. Miss Longy, her family is fifth, she's got five generations in this town 
of builders, appraisers. And Donna Dubinowski, I mean, I go back with her. I knew her mom. These are people who come here with knowledge. They aren't somebody who just said, OK, I'll be on this board. So for them to come forward tonight has taken a lot of courage. And we can't sit back. We owe it to the residents of this town, and not only the residents of this town that had the courage to go before them, but the residents of this town that I'm hearing were too intimidated to go before them. We don't bully. We don't intimidate. None of us do. And I find it appalling. I am sick of sitting up here and apologizing for my town that I love. I sit on here because I love this town. We need to get it together, people, sooner than later. And I know the people from Cultural Arts left, but I want to apologize to them, too, because volunteers should not be treated like second-class citizens. So get it together. Any other councilor communications? Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of smaller things. I did want to let people know, for hopefully folks who are still watching at home, um, there is re a recent state program. It's a home buying assistance program. It's for assistance with down payment. Um, this might dovetail well, dovetail well with our own town uh, program, which is a first time home buyers assistance program. Um, if you have any interest in that, uh, please reach out to the town or myself. I'm happy to facilitate that. Um, owner ownership is a very important thing, and it's great to get on the ladder with a little bit of help um, through that state money that we're able to use. Um, I also have a lot of questions and concerns about things that have been raised regarding um, tax assessment in town. I think it's really important for the town to look at that. Uh, the town council has uh, enumerated investigative powers, and I think it's pretty reasonable for that uh, us to start at that point. Um, I, I uh, at the last meeting, requested for um, the council to be updated on that. Really, all of the uh, factual assertions that I've gotten have been from folks who have reached out. Now, I, I really think it's important to be objective about this, and so I want all the facts, and I think the best place to start is for the council to be briefed on that. Um, I hope other people feel the same, because there are a lot of really concerning things being said, and thank you for coming out and raising those. Uh, lastly, regarding the right-of-way, I do think that that is incredibly important. When the town uh, looks at taking uh, or infringing on anybody's property um, in any way, I think it's great uh, for us to make sure that we are not imposing more than our legal right to do so. Um, tonight, I think we'll consider um, we'll consider a memorandum of understanding for that project to go forward. Um, I don't want to speak too much about that because there have been some discussions between the town and developer. I hope Attorney Talbert can maybe comment on the extent of that right of way will be respected, but I would not support a, um, a project that, that infringed upon that. It's really important that people are able to use their property pursuant to their legal rights. So, thank you. And any other counselor communications? Uh, and again, just, just or, there's a resolution on the table for the bid for an independent review. Are we tabling that or are we going to discuss Let's that? Table it. So I think to Councillor uh, uh, Nick's uh, point, you know, I've been calling for an audit for four months, and I think it's time if whatever, whatever method people feel is the fairest, and that's what we have to decide what is the fairest approach here for both, again, for both our, for our, our tax office and both the BAA and for the residents. So it's got to be fair to everybody. And that's what people need to sit down and understand what do they think is fair and what's the right way to do this because this is this is not going to go away i mean there's assessments coming up for the fall there's assessments for next year this is an ongoing process <laughs> yes this is a five-year reval but assessments go on every year and there's again to be fair to everyone involved we need to be able to get some sort of review whether it be through the council doing it or through you know the waiver that we're i mean i whatever folks feel comfortable that's where you get to speak up and say this because this has to be done and it has to be done pretty quickly this can't wait six months from now when we decide we're going to so if the council is going to if i've been hearing council wants to sort of you know be involved to pick that's fine then we need to get an rfp together and get it out there and get some folks in and we want to interview personally 
And that's fine. This can't wait six months from now or seven months from now, whatever it may be. If that's the route people want to go, I just want it to be fair. It should be independent, and everyone deserves to be treated fairly. And I think that's the key. And if that's if the council wants to sort of dictate that, then we need to move pretty quickly. And because it's we're not going to have a meeting till July, and that's two weeks from now. And then we don't have a meeting in the end of July. We only have one meeting in August, and here we go. We're in September already. And that's then you're going through the next round of appeals. I mean, this has to move pretty well. There'll be a special meeting. So I'm hearing a lot of great talk, but I see no action here. So the, the point is we need to either get uh, together as a council to decide how we're going to handle this, or we talk if we're going to table this resolution tonight, that's fine. If other folks want, like I said, if the council wants to dictate it, we need to move pretty quickly. This cannot drag on. And, you, and I think the point is there's a lot of people out there that you're not hearing from. That's the key is the people that you're not hearing from. And so we have to decide as a body if that's the route we want to take. And if it's not the route that we want to take, we should discuss that in public as well. So if the issue is we don't want to do that, that's fine too. But that should be discussed in public. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other councilor communications? I just councilor like to respond Santana. to Councilor Ludwig because I, you know what I am hearing is very much in line with what you are suggesting. There, no one that I know of is suggesting that we let this run on for months and months. Okay, and there is what we do and the way that we do it. And I think that we are entitled to some input and background into what has been suggested. I, I, I don't want anybody to have the impression that we're dragging our feet because we're not. And everybody up here has received the same information that I have. Things are being proposed. We need to, we, we are prepared to move on this quickly. Um, and you know, I, I don't want anybody to have the impression that we're, we're not listening or that we're dragging our feet because we are not. Um, there are some other things which I'd like to respond to, but I'll wait because they're going to come up later in the agenda. Thank you. Okay. Any other counselor communications? Yeah. Good evening. Um, I wanted to thank the BAA for coming here tonight and um, discussing all these points that we are very interested in. So thank you for coming. Um, and I think we do need to retain an independent review, but I think it should be council selected, not someone that other people pick. Um, so we'll be working on that. Also, I agree with Councillor Hopkins of, with regarding Mr. Riley and his right of way to his property. Um, it's, unfor it's unfortunate how this has kind of all come together, but hopefully we can uh, come to some solution where everybody's happy. Um, I also wanted to uh, congratulate all the adult ed graduates, which was uh, a week and a half ago, and also Enfield High is having their high school graduation this Wednesday. So congratulations to them as well. Okay, I'd like to make a couple. Go, go ahead, Councillor. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Scala, and just then I'll finish up. Very briefly, just because we are apparently going to table um, the item regarding the discussion and resolution about the independent um, review, um, Councillor Santanella was correct. I, I believe that we as a body have agreed that we would do an independent review. It's ready to go tonight. There's per some councillors just don't want to move on it tonight. Um, and unfortunately, I think, Mike, it's not going to happen quick now if people don't want to move on it tonight because they want to have more input on who we select. So um, it will happen. It may not happen as quickly as some people want, and it may not happen um, with who other people want. So it'll happen, when I guess, when it happens, unfortunately. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, I, I'd like to make a couple of, couple of comments. Uh, first of all, for everybody that came and uh, talk tonight. Thank you for uh, coming up and saying what you had to say. Uh, we are, as a council, going to be looking at an independent review of the of the process um, for all sides that are, you know, involved um, in regard to Councillor Hopkins, uh, Councillor uh, Ludwig, and, and everybody on the council. We are going to be moving forward uh, with a, an independent review. Uh, we do have, you know, we could be moving in on this. We are going to table it. Some of the uh, counselors wanted to discuss uh, the firms that, that have been brought up. We will discuss this. We will be moving forward with this. And uh, this is something that we will take, um, take heart to. And we will get this independent review going. Um, 
You know, we actually could could have passed it tonight, possibly, but we are going to be tabling this, and we will be discussing this amongst ourselves, and then we'll uh, make decisions to go from there. Um, there's a couple other things that I want to mention. Uh, yes, I was in here at the last council meeting. My daughter uh, got married, and I want to thank everybody for their well wishes uh, on her wedding. Um, and I am going to make a comment that family matters come come number one. And I will will let you know that if my daughter was getting married tonight, I would be at that wedding. So I know that there were some comments about you had a choice. Well, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I did have a choice. And if, and if you didn't know that I was not going to be here on Monday, then, then you must have your head in the sand. And I will make that comment right now. And I will also, and I, and I did mention about the uh, District 1 candidate. I urged this group not to move forward with it, that we would probably could have taken care of business this week in regard to that and got that position filled. You took it upon yourself to do that under the recommendation that I gave to everybody not to. And that was a choice that people made. And that was the choice and that was the outcome. Because I, I would tell you right now, the outcome probably would have been different. And we will be uh, looking at the D1 candidate and we'll, we'll, we will be moving forward with that. There's a couple other things I, uh, that I am gonna mention. And I know that was mentioned before about adult education, uh, graduation, congratulations to all of those students who uh, took a different route to their high school graduation. There are three different programs that are involved, and congratulations to the 18 people uh, that graduated. I know a number of counselors did, did attend. The second thing um, is the high school graduation on, on Wednesday. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Uh, I would like uh, to congratulate all the teachers and all of the administrators and the students that are involved with that and all the, the students in the Enfield school system. Um, to uh, Jessica out in the audience there, this is an issue that we will be taking up and we will take it very seriously uh, in regards to the five items that you did bring up tonight. So thank you for that. Um, the other thing I want to congratulate the Enfield um, F, uh, Enfield Stars uh, Special Olympics team uh, that competed the last two weekends in the state games. Uh, they did a great job, and they should be uh, to be recognized and commended for a job well done. Also, I'd like to recognize the person to my left, audience is right, Councillor Mangini, along with. Um, County Preventure and Julie Kotner um, last week was awarded the Paul Harris Award, which is the highest award given uh, by the Rotary Club. So I want to say congratulations to you in public for that, for your volunteer work. Um, also, I want to mention on June 25th, Allied uh, will be having a walkathon and a family day fundraiser at Enfield High School. It would be nice to uh, see members of the council uh, there um, and show a little support. Uh, once again, uh, on June 8th, I met with the Yukon Project People Empowering People program, uh, and Lorena Serenos and, and that group, the Latino uh, group. Um, they worked in conjunction, in conjunction with our town staff uh, and donated and planted uh, several dogwood trees. I think it was 14 of them uh, out on the out in the green area over here. And they, they did a, a wonderful job. And um, you know, so I want to recognize them uh, for their their work. 
and community outreach program that they have and especially partnering up with the University of Connecticut. I think it's a great program. Uh, they, they meet quite often over at uh, the Alcorn School and I had a wonderful uh, reception with them. So congratulations to Lorena and her group also. Um, that's all that I um, have to say uh, at this point in time. Um, you know, we, we have the 4th of July celebration coming up. There's a lot of good things that are happening in Enfield. Uh, we will get to the bottom of some of these issues that we are uh, dealing with, and we will move forward. Uh, so, Councilor Communications are, are done. Uh, town Manager report. Good evening. I'll make this brief since we did have a long agenda tonight. Um, I did want to direct everyone's attention to the PAR report. Um, a couple of pieces have been moving along. The first one is just to draw everyone's attention to the work of the Economic Development Commission. We have asked them to develop some parameters for the ARPA funds that we're going to be making available to small businesses. And so that will be something that would be coming out hopefully for the summer that the town council will then be able to review and then we will be uh, putting that out to the public. Uh, secondary to that is we also had an alloc an allotment set aside for nonprofits. Those parameters have yet to be determined because we're trying to find the right mix of people in order to do that where there isn't a conflict uh, with people who are already involved in nonprofits because we don't, we don't want anyone to not be able to apply. Uh, also, you will see within your packet that we're going out to bid for the demolition of La Magna and Strand. Um, Mr. Wilcox has also included the quarterly report on expenditures. And I just did want to take a minute in terms of the Lamagna Strand. Uh, the assistant town manager and I did meet Mr. Wiley last week after he expressed some concerns over an interaction with um, some town employees and what was related to him. Uh, we did visit his um, home where he's renovating. It was actually the Bigelow Clubhouse. And so it's extremely historic. He has done a great job. It's a wonderful property with great bones. Um, we have worked with staff to date and we are not going to uh, condone what was just a, not a great parking situation at Bigelow and we've moved it so that is going to be adjacent to the property so any of his tenants who do have need for visitors medical visits or their own vehicles will be able to park right next door and we're going to alter what is in fact going to be the staging area I will not relinquish. Um, I'm not going to speak to the legal issues in terms of the easement, but what you're doing tonight is just the MOU in terms of entering a relationship and, and thus conversations with them. Um, I will say, though, that any kind of demolition that occurs right now, the way those buildings are constructed, the strand literally sits on Mr. Riley's property line, which is a very difficult situation. So some of the demolition issues are surrounding how to protect his property and the property of his neighbors during that difficult process. Um, however, any new construction that happens has to adhere to the new regulations where there'll be a very healthy setback. So there's all of that that is under consideration. Just as a reminder, the MOU is really a, a kind of get to know us type of relationship. It is not legally binding. There is a lot that can go into protecting people like Mr. Riley, the town, and anybody else that's in that vicinity. So uh, those are some of the things that have transpired since last week. Um, I also did want to mention that the um, Neighborhood Assistance Act that you heard about at public participation is on your agenda as item L. We are just a pass through for that, but we were able to accommodate St. Patrick's Church so that they can apply as well. And in terms of the assessment issues, I think it's we all can agree tonight that there is definitely a need for an independent review. And what we did in the interim since our last meeting when Councilor Ludwig said that it you know, needed to be pushed forward and gave us some ideas about what he thought that looked like, we took that to heart. We did talk to some of you about what you thought it looked like as well. And I guess what we can be guilty of is being a little aggressive in how we went about and pursued it. This is a very technical nature of, of as you can tell. 
Um, there's information and technical issues that go into the revaluation and the assessment that none of us up here are experts on. And so we felt strongly that going out and creating a pathway in order to evaluate who actually has that skill, has the availability, and doesn't have a conflict would be the appropriate way to go and present that to you tonight. So we did some work and I will yield to the town attorney so he could maybe um, assuage your concerns a little bit about the process. It was not meant to co-opt the process, it was meant to ease the process because this is not something that is, an, that is an easy sell. There's a very finite number of people who would have been qualified in order to do this that would have met our high standards of what we would like done. Yeah, if I may, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, um, Madam Town Manager. Uh, and I know there's been a call to perhaps discuss this in executive session, and quite frankly, at first blush, I'm not sure there's a readily available exception to go into executive to discuss it. Certainly not tonight, it's not on the agenda. So let me just weigh in because there's been a lot said. Um, as your town attorney, three weeks ago, over the long holiday weekend, we received the BAA report, uh, which raised substantial issues Two weeks ago at the council meeting, we heard additional concerns which raised substantial issues and we heard the call for an independent review. And so I was tasked with, all right, make recommendations. How do we do this? Um, I can tell you, as you all know, uh, I'm a part-time town attorney. I maintain a regular private practice. And in my private practice, because I've been doing municipal public entity work for 26 years, we are occasionally called upon to do these reviews, whether there's a complaint made against uh, a town employee and it makes sense to farm it out or there are myriad issues why municipalities want to farm out an investigation to have an independent review. Obviously it wouldn't be appropriate for me as town attorney or my firm to do it because I am town attorney and I get consulted on these issues. But what we're talking about, as we heard from the members of the BAA respectfully tonight, are issues of Connecticut law. And so what you have to consider is this. You take municipal law, which is a unique um, area of practice. There's a small group of firms and lawyers that specialize that. And then you slice down further to those lawyers who focus on municipal tax appeals. It's a small group of lawyers. And so uh, I was tasked with, all right, who would be uh, an appropriate outside entity or firm or person to do this review? Again, we're talking about Connecticut general statutes. PA 490 is very complex, has a lot of nuances, and in order to really figure out these issues, you have to understand the interplay between the statutes, of the case law, Supreme Court decisions, new legislation, personnel issues. Um, and so the way you find a, a, the best neutral, independent, well-qualified uh, outside person to do this is you could do an RFP or an RFQ, and get the full range of candidates and it'll take you weeks to get it out there and then you're gonna have to interview them and you're talking months or you could do what we did. I was tasked with coming up with a short list of candidates. We narrowed it to three. We started interviewing those candidates and we weeded out two of the three because they had some association either um, they had uh, matters pending with Enfield where they're adverse uh, or they had some association with um, the tax assessor's prior town. We ended up with a firm, Bircham Moses. It's a Milford-based firm. We put together um, a resolution to waive the bid requirement. Uh, we conferred with the lawyer at that firm who is an expert in tax appeals. He's ready to take on the assignment. We had it queued up for you to vote on tonight. But you want to table it, that's your prerogative. If you want to be more involved, if you want to add names to the list, matters not to me who you select. But just know that we heard the concerns and we agree we'd like to have an independent outside review. So we've done the groundwork. You can act on it tonight or you can table it and uh, we'll bring it up another day. That's all I had to add. Okay, thank you. Can I just comment? C yeah, Councilor Santanello. Yeah, so I, I would just like to say, um, Attorney Talberg, through the mayor to the town attorney, I want to just say I, I respect you um, immensely, and I appreciate you taking on this work at the behest of uh, some of the concerns that have been raised here. I am, I'm going to just tell the council, I, I am prepared to move forward if the council feels that their involvement <laughs> that this involvement and the discussion here, and if there's no reason for us to go in executive session, if we want to have the conversation now and move forward tonight, 
I, I'm, I'm fine with that. But I'm not going to hear that we handpick somebody that was somebody's friend and that we are going to discredit the firm that has been recommended from the beginning. So if, if we can agree that that is the best recommendation from the town attorney, let's move forward right now. But I don't want to hear that we're sandbagging this from the beginning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Over the weekend, um, is once again, I have to, you know, mention that, you know, we got feedback from both of the caucuses in regard to wanting to table this matter. Mr. Tallberg gave us a very... Well, I have the floor right now. Excuse me. I have the floor right now. When it's your turn, I'll let you talk. All right? Excuse me. Well, I'm, you, I have the floor. Mr. Mayor, Thank it you. is a valid point of procedure, the point Excuse of order. Me. Um, I think it's, you know, we need to consider the point of order first. I think that's fair. It's just, we do No, it. you're wrong. Excuse me. Because the mayor is addressing an issue brought up by town attorney. That's where he is correct. The, the only thing that I'm just going to be mentioning to Mr. Talberg is thank you for your efforts in supplying everybody with this information that you just talked to, and we had all weekend to examine it. And I'm ready to move forward with it myself. So, um, so we do feel strongly that the recommendation is not has no connections to anybody sitting on this dais or we believe anybody sitting on your dais to the audience or to the assessor and tax office and that was the standard that we set was that we want an unbiased independent and thorough review by someone who's qualified to make that so with respect to the fact that i do know that many of you had expressed some reservations i do think based on tonight's uh, discussions this the and, and really, honestly, the staff of the assessors and tax office would welcome this as well because, again, there's multiple sides to every story. I would urge you to think about bringing that motion forward so that we can begin that work. Okay, th thank you. Uh, are there any uh, reports from special committees from the council? Uh, Councilor Mangini. Yes, I do want to <clears throat> comment on the... Um, uh, concern that the residents have, and I share, over uh, schools, buildings, safety. <clears throat> we do have a committee of uh, comprised of uh, our police department, our fire department, town staff, liaisons from the council that <clears throat> have been and will continue to meet excuse me, on a regular basis to review and address issues. Those issues are not going to be brought public because the issues are of sensitive nature where, um, you know, requiring um, methods that, that our PD and our experts are privy to to protect our school buildings. So having said that, I just want the people to know that the concerns are not falling on deaf ears. That's not happening at all. These issues are being addressed, and they're being done very appropriately. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other uh, reports of special committees? I, I do want to have one uh, thing to mention, just a reminder, and this was also discussed at the Commission on Aging um, about we're a reminder for the residents that we are establishing a tax relief uh, committee in the coming weeks. And once again, if anybody's interested in serving, and I know that some people have put their names forward, uh, but you should make an application to the town manager's office so that we can start making appointments moving forward. Thank you. All right, item 11, unfinished business. There are none. Moving on to item 12. Discussion resolution a request for a bid waiver to retain an independent review of the reval process. Now, um, 
since we're looking to, uh, I will entertain uh, discussion if we're ready to move forward with this or we look, look, we look the table for it. Um, so, yeah. No, it's already on the table, yeah. Uh, so, listen, I, if I, I know you don't have to remove it, it's on the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I, I want everyone to be comfortable. So if some people here want to have a little more say, that's not a bad thing for the town councilor. So if they, I'm, again, I, this is important because this is not just for this year. This sets, as we move forward, again, some of these folks shouldn't have to come back to the assessor appeal every, I mean, to the board every year. So if some counselors have some reservations, they want to be able to maybe interview the individual. I don't know, maybe we, the individual, we, we schedule an interview, folks can talk to them. So it delays a little bit, but gives everyone some comfort. People have to be comfortable. This is a council decision. And so I, again, I'm okay. I would love, I appreciate wanting to move forward because I've been calling for this. So again, full disclosure, but I also understand other counselors who have some reservations. And so I'm not, this is not something I want to jam down someone's throat who may say, look, I would like maybe to interview the individual or yeah, maybe I would want to go to bid. Maybe this is that important that we want to solicit other opportunities, interview them. Maybe it takes a little longer. But that, that's, a counselor has a right to, you know, to sort of have that view and, and this not to be, a, 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 this should be a 9-10-0 vote. So if someone's uncomfortable with that, I'm more than willing to wait to make sure we take care of everyone's concerns. Because again, it, it deals with town staff, it deals with our independent BAA, and of course our residents. So this is not just one thing we're reviewing here. There's multiple different things we're reviewing and everyone deserves to be comfortable in what we're doing. And so I'm more than willing to wait if other folks would like to sort of, again, you know, hey, what's interview? We would like to, like to meet the person first, talk to them, make sure everyone's comfortable. Or if you want to go to bed, I'm okay with that too. So, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm fine either way. I just want people to be comfortable. And if other people have reserves, then they, I mean, reservations about not, not being able to have a say in the, the recommendation, then that's a valid point in my opinion. So that's all I'm saying. Okay, th thank you. Uh, Councilor Pisner. Okay, as I said before, um, yes, I want to see this resolved. And I want to see it resolved quickly. But it's more about accuracy. And it's about gaining the respect back of our citizens. I would like to be a bigger part in choosing. As a counselor, we're the governing body. And the residents of this town look to us. So for me, I would like a list, and I would like it to either go out to the RFP, or I would like a list, and we can interview and ask questions. I think we owe it to the citizens. Councilor I Unger. agree with Councilor Pisner. I think I'd like to be a part of the process of uh, selecting who we get. Oh, if we're going down the line. Yeah, we're, yeah let's go right down <laughs> the line. I'm ready to vote tonight. Yep. Like I stated before, I am ready to vote tonight myself. <clears throat> I'm also ready to vote for a couple of reasons. One, this is a situation where time is of the essence and we have an issue that needs to be resolved. And as Councilman Ludwig mentioned earlier, we're not meeting again until July and then again in August. But beyond all that, <clears throat> I have faith in our town attorney and our town staff. You've done the vetting. I don't have knowledge as to which law firm or which attorney is um, competent, sufficient, qualified to handle this task. I deter it to you. That's what we pay you for. So thank you for doing the work. I'm ready to vote on this. Thank you, Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, also appreciate the hard work of town staff and have confidence in town staff, but to me this is a matter of process. Um, this issue has been kicking around, this constellation of issues has been kicking around for some weeks now. Um, I haven't been briefed on it. I don't think that the council as, as a full group has been briefed on it. This is a serious thing. Um, I don't know where the facts are. I'm not sure. Uh, I would like some kind of understanding where that is. As I mentioned before, uh, in the charter, the council has the duty and rights to investigate town departments. And to me, it seems more appropriate for this to start there. And I think we should move quickly. I agree with my colleagues, but to go to this uh, at, at the first glance is, is not the way I would want to do it. So I, I, 
uh, I do not want to move forward on this today. But I can definitely see it resulting in an independent investigation. I just think it's really out of order. Councilor Santana. Well, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we're going to have the votes to vote tonight. Um, and so, you know, we're also not going to wait until July. Let's have a special meeting uh, next week or tomorrow or Friday or Thursday. But, you know, um, we're, we owe it to folks to get this done. And we're not going to dilly dally getting it done. So these people, uh, you know, I believe this is a specialty, as Attorney Talberg has communicated to us. We, we can't just let the very few people, I can't imagine there's thousands of people practicing law in Connecticut who do this work. It sounds about as dry as a bone. So we, we can't lose we can't lose people and then we're gonna have nobody to pick from. So we're gonna have to roll up our sleeves and we're gonna just have to keep coming back here until we can find somebody. But we're we're not waiting until July. I, I don't think that anybody here deserves us dilly dallying. So, so yes or no, Jen. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't have. We don't well, have. Six I would vote now, but we we don't have. Six. Councilor Finger. Uh, through the mayor to the town attorney, the only thing I am really disagreeing about is when you and the town manager met with these people or discussed. You did your research on them, then you said that you made a decision on us. I didn't see anything in, in my in my emails as a council emailer that you were doing all this. You know, I'm told that again new street guy, not a businessman, not, not a very much of a college person, that you were going to interview all these people or th thought about it. I saw something today uh, in one of your replies, but that was it. But I mean, I just think that if something that we're supposed to be, be doing as the body, we should have been more involved with the process of what you and the town manager were doing. That's my only thing. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I, that's the way I see it. If I may, just point of order, respond to that. Uh, Councilor, because of FOI, when the group meets as a group, you have to announce it publicly. We, you can't meet secretly and have us update you about what's going on. We have to do it in a public format like this. And so information, my understanding, was communicated to leadership. It should have filtered out from there. Plus, an email was, was sent to everybody. I think there might just be a misunderstanding through the mayor that there were actual meetings and interviews. That wasn't the case. It was a, a culling of names based on the specialty and availability and people who do not have conflicts with Enfield at this time. So the list continued to shrink like that. I have not met any of the people. I'm not sure if you... Yeah, I interviewed two I interviewed two of the three and, and ran the facts by them and tried to weed out conflicts and ended up with the one who didn't have the conflict. and was the best candidate that we brought forward. I mean, again, you know, I, I totally agree with, you know, Consular Santanello, you know, a lot of respect. You know, you're a very intelligent individual and we pay you to do this job. I just wish I knew more about it. I mean, I, and I, it's probably my fault too. I've had a few uh, setbacks the last couple of weeks. So, um, but I just think that I'm, I'm ready to vote tonight along with everybody else. Thank you. Based on what I what I just heard right now, item number twelve, uh, the request for a bid waiver to retain an independent review of the revaluation issues. Um, so we're we're looking at uh, for a motion to table this for the time being, so that everybody can be satisfied with with, with the process. We just will stay on, okay? So we'll stay on the table. We don't have to vote on it, and we just move forward with it. We, everybody in agreement to that, we will table this, and then we will reconvene and discuss this as a, as a group. Question? So could you just enumerate what you want those next steps to be? Would you like an RFP, or would you like to bring in the people that had been vetted, or the one person, I guess, that at this point isn't in conflict? Would you like us to widen the search? Just if you could just give us some ideas of how you see this moving forward. Well, I think, sure you know, with, with the recommendation that, that you gave to us, I think, you know, we, we, we should interview okay. uh, that, that firm. And if there's uh, any other firms that are available, then we could interview them. Okay. To the, to the town manager, through the mayor. Um, I mean, my, my... Excuse me, Mr. Hopkins. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, some, some additional thoughts I was hearing just to, to kind of crystallize this. Um, 
I think there were also some questions about having a special meeting and getting to more, know more about the facts of the issue. Not, I mean, my own you personal can't. concerns are not with the law firms at all. It's really needing to know more information about the situation before making a determination that a independent review uh, that we're paying for is really the best way to go. So that's that would be where my thoughts are, and I, I communicated that last meeting as well. So. I'm not sure how that would be accomplished. I mean, the, I, I think that if the town council wants to be involved in the vetting process, that is absolutely appropriate, and we can make that happen so that your comfort level with whomever is chosen mm -hmm. is good. But you're, in essence, choosing someone to conduct the investigation independently and without bias, and then to present you with a report. So Correct. I guess I'm a little confused about what input you would have in actually defining the scope there because I think it's pretty clear what the scope is. It's the beginning of the evaluation process all the way through the um, interaction with the public, the office, the role of the BAA, and the final product of the grand list and the, and the valuations and everything in between. So there's a chronological timeline and there's a ton of data for them to mine. And I think that um, you know your comfort level is, is important, but all everything else is going to work itself out in the actual contract that you make with the independent review. Anything right. in addition to that could possibly be construed as influencing or conflicting with that independent review. All right. Well, this is why I, we want to move for, forward with the independent review and, um, and schedule up uh, a meeting so that we can interview the uh, prospective firm. And if there is a other pool, right. then we can, um, you know, also interview any other prospective uh, firms that are available. Okay, so our charge will be to schedule a meeting at the at a time when the majority of the council is available to interview the recommendation from the town attorney's office to start, or do you want Correct. additional names added? Well, we would first start with him, and then additional names. Okay. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Scala. Like we're just going to go around in circles. So right. this is what I've heard when I was up here, is that we have some counselors who are ready to go now. We have some counselors that really wanted to go to an RFP, which is something very different. I believe, and I don't want to misunderstand what you're saying, but I think Counselor Hopkins wants to be briefed on what this person or firm or even us would be looking at before we go to the next step, which would be the independent contract contractor review. So it sounds like maybe you want like an executive session to kind of get the facts from sort of how they're, I don't know, how they, how they add up from all sides and sort of then figure out if you believe that this should be an independent party. Um, I don't believe that we should be interviewing um, or that we really need to interview several candidates. I don't know if that means we want to interview the three that Jim has or if we want to just have Jim come in and then he can give us a synopsis of those three. I feel like I, I, we're just going to go around in circles um, because I think we all want something different. That's my. That's what I'm hearing. So I wish I could give you a charge, but I don't know that I have one because I don't think that there's a uniform charge here. I think some people want it done with who you're recommending. Some people want it to go to RFP, and some people, I believe, think that maybe we should be the first step and then decision if there is a, an independent review. But I don't want to misstate um, what you're stating. Go ahead, Councilor Mangini. I, I couldn't agree with um, Deputy Mayor Sakala more. You said exactly what... I was going to say, but I want to add to that. <clears throat> if our town attorney has already vetted a couple of firms and several attorneys and has some reservations, it sounds like, about perhaps a couple, and he's um, bringing forward the name of a attorney or law firm that would be able to handle the situation, why are we going to be ourselves looking at a pool, more than likely that pool is going to consist of what our town attorney has already vetted and the one that he's recommending. So maybe we can get rid of that piece and focus on who and, and why 
uh, and how do certain council people want to get involved in this? We should we should not, and we don't have any business micromanaging town staff, first of all and foremost. And then second of all, for what purpose? I guess I'm confused there. So we need to give clear direction to town staff, but I'm really not sure what is the clear direction. Thank you. Just one other brief right. thing. Thank Con you, Mr. Councilor Mayor. Hopkins. Uh, just, to, just to be clear on the process, so we do have the power to investigate town departments. Now, that's just generally speaking. It's very clearly in the charter. I'm not saying that that's necessarily should be the case here. I just want to understand more about the problems that folks have raised. Maybe those aren't real. Maybe those are real. But we absolutely have the power to do that. The question is, do we then want to say, hey, let's farm that out to an independent law firm? Could make sense. I just need to know more about this, and especially because it's in the charter. Now, it's just clearly the first step for this kind of thing. A lot of concerns raised. I think we should take this uh, very, we should act very carefully, but also quickly. Any other comments for anybody? Uh, I mean, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think I would like to, I would personally like to interview the law. I don't know why that's, I'd like to, I mean, again, we're dealing with different subsets of the popular of our town here. I like to interview the person and then to see what the scope of what they're going to do. And if folks want to send an RFP out simultaneously, if they don't like them, you already have that process. Not to the people maybe our town attorneys already looked at. Maybe there are others out there. That's just a suggestion. So you're going simultaneously. But again, I, in my opinion, I think, again, I, I agree. It's in the charter. Councilor Hopkins is correct. We have the legislative and investigative authority as a council. And this is a big this is a big deal, and and I agree. We need everyone's got to be comfortable, and I, like I said, I I think I would like to personally interview the lawyer. I would like to you know if we have a chance, and if it only delays it a week, it delays it a week, and if other people get the feeling that this person is going to be in, impartial, they're going to understand what the scope of the investigation is going to be. Then maybe we don't have to send an R. You know, we can rescind the. You can always rescind an RFP. You can just say, look, we found somebody. You rescind the RFP. If you do it all at once. You're covered, and that sort of should cover what others' concerns are. And I think everyone's concerns are valid here. I mean, it's you know, I, I, when you're investigating stuff, it's serious. It's everyone should be on board, and and that's just you know, I think if it takes an extra week or two, then so be it. Okay. Okay. In listening to whatever everybody has to to say, um, I think first first and foremost, we would like to set up and talk to the firm, okay? That, that, that'll that be num number one. And then we'll get a feeling at that point, and then we can determine where we're gonna go from there. If, we're, we are, if we are all comfortable with this particular firm, and they give us the scope and the sequence of, of what they're gonna be doing and what they're gonna be covering, and if we're all comfortable with that, then we can proceed forward. If not, then we will look at other firms. But. Step number one, let's go with that. All right. Understood, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank, you right. for the thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your input in regard to this. Not, not an easy uh, situation here. All right. Moving on to the consent agenda. We have seven items on consent. Uh, do any counselors wish to pull any items off for further discussion? I'm sorry, to, I mean, but six and seven, we really should have a those amount of money. I appreciate efficiency, I really do, but that amount of money being transferred should be discussed. And not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not against the pro, but I, I think people need to understand we're moving 1.8, 1.6 million dollars. I understand it's ARPA to funds, but I'm sorry, that should be a regular discussion item. It shouldn't be, a, in my opinion, a consent item, even though I'm sure most everyone supports it. It's just that again. It, and again, the, the fiscal year, you know, whether we're doing something in 22 versus 23, I understand why we're doing it. But again, we're, we're moving money for small businesses in 22. 22 budget ends in two weeks. We're not going to start any I unless we're already ready to go to give out money. What's the need? What's what's the point? Roll over to the next budget, which starts 7-1 to 7-1. You know, and I understand we want money in two different budget cycles on some of the, you know, the, the great, the great brook makes sense, but I don't know, I think this, this should be, in my opinion, should be a discussion item and not in the, uh, the consent agenda. I'm not against the projects, these I'm for, 
but I just don't think it should be a consent, so I'll have to abstain for you know, the, if we're going to go through with it. That's just, again, I think it's a procedural issue and that amount of money. Thank you. Uh, sure. uh, <clears throat> town manager, please. Through the mayor. Uh, we do have Mr. Wilcox here if you'd like him to enumerate, but these are, so th these are approved through the budget process and ARPA funds do not run according to fiscal year, so we do have some overlay, but these are just, uh, we wanted to put them on consent because they've already been approved, but we also wanted them to be shown so people can follow along with what those ARPA funds are doing. So that was the purpose of putting them there because they've already received an approval. All right, thank you. Um, okay, all in favor of the consent calendars items one through seven, uh, we have a vote. Yay. Okay, opposed. Uh, abstentions okay um, so we have uh, eight in favor and one abstention okay thank you uh, appointments town council appointed uh, at the request of councillors Ungire and Santanello who serve as the liaison to this commission uh, there's not going to be any action on these appointments tonight so we will be moving on to um, Item E, discussion resolution, the resolution authorizing the, just let me get my paperwork in order here. Okay. Item E, the resolution authorizing the transfer of funds for social services administration, 12,500. Um, I'll read the resolution in a second, but this is to complete uh, their consulting agreement per the recent uh, reorganization of their department. All right, resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer uh, is hereby made to Social Services Administration, other professional services, 12500 from Youth Services, appropriated fund balance, 12500 Certification, I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of June 20th. John Wilcox, Director of Finance, date 613-22, approved by Ellen Zapu Sasu, the Town Manager, date 613-22. So moved. Uh, Councillor Mangini and a second, second Councillor Hopkins. Uh, discussions? No discussion? Uh, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Councillor Santanella? Four. Councillor Ungayer? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. Um, nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Okay. Item F, discussion, resolution, the resolution setting a public hearing to amend Chapter 22 of the Town Code of Enfield, Article 2, Enfield Culture and Arts Commission Ordinance. Uh, this is the purpose to create a portion of a liaison from the Board of Education. The resolution uh, reads, whereas Chapter 22 Article 2 of the Town Code establishes the Enfield Cultural and Arts Commission, and whereas the Town Council wishes to amend the ordinance to add a Board of Ed liaison to be determined by the Board of Ed, and whereas the Town Council wishes to seek input from the residents of the Town of Enfield regarding the proposed amendments. Now, therefore, it be resolved the Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 18. 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Tuesday, July 5th, 2022, at 6.50 p.m., to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed amendments to Chapter 22 of the Town Code of Enfield, Article 2, the Enfield Culture and Arts Commission Ordinance, date prepared June 13th, 2022, prepared by the Town Manager's Office. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second, Second. Uh, I, th I think we had Councillor <laughs> Santanella. Okay, uh, discussion? Yes. Uh, Councillor Mangini. Thank you. Um, through our mayor to our town manager, I, I guess I'm just a little confused as to why we're looking for a board of ed liaison. Do we have a council liaison? Yes. So why, why do we need a board of ed liaison? Uh, yes, 
I'm sorry, uh, Councilor Mangini, if, if you don't mind. Uh, Councilor Ungayer and I. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you just oh, through, Mr. Through, through me. Mr. Mayor. Councilor yeah. Santanella. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Councilor Mangini, so uh, Councilor Ungayer and I sit on the Cultural Arts Commission as uh, council liaisons. Um, when... <clears throat> When I first started attending meetings, one of the things that became obvious is that there are arts communities that exist in our community. Many of them exist in our schools. There are drama, there are drama music, art groups. There's a, there's a community there that has no ties to the cultural, okay. Culture and okay. Art, Arts okay. Commission. And all the suggestion here is, is that somebody from the Board of Ed mm -hmm. should be a liaison to be able to include and bring in um, groups that we know already exist in the community to support part of the cultural and arts okay. culture and arts commission, and so this is why we needed to. Uh, I, I will tell you, I did not realize that we needed to have a hearing and amend the resolution. So, um, if you can just forgive the new person for uh, messing up, um, but I think that it's an invaluable uh, communication uh, and conduit from the culture arts commission to um, uh, to the board of ed, and that's why this is being proposed. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councillor Ungar. This is just going to start a conversation of the value or not of having that. So having a public hearing, there will be plenty of discussion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call, please. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ledwick? That's four. Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Councillor Santanella? Four. Councillor Ungar? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. And Councilor Finger? Four. And nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, item G, discussion resolution, a resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a preferred developer MOU with Impact Residential Development LLC for the Strand Theater and the La Mania Center. Um, before I read the resolution, um, this is a, like a milestone for, for downtown. And, you know, having met with representatives of uh, Impact Residential last month, um, we're ha happy to see this uh, substantive uh, proposal. Uh, we appreciate all the feedback that the council has provided, and the MOU is going to allow us to uh, continue discussions with Impact uh, in regard to this. So uh, we as the council will have the oversight into the process and how this is going to be continuing. So. Um, the resolution reads, whereas Impact Residential Development LLC has submitted a memorandum of agreement to the town as to the proposed redevelopment project for the former Strand Theater property and La Mania Activity Center properties, and whereas IRD will be preferred developer to plan the mixed-use redevelopment project, complete its due diligence, and develop a final design. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Enfield Town Council authorizes the town manager to sign a memorandum of agreement with Impact Residential Development, subject to the review by the town attorney, prepared by Nelson Tereso, Director of Economic and Community Development, date prepared June 10, 2022. So moved. Uh, Councillor Mangini. Second. Uh, second, uh, Councillor Santanella. Uh, discussion, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Ellen, do you have anything, or Jim? Okay. Uh, Councillor Pisner, I know you had your hand up. Well, I, I see Mr. Riley standing here. Um, we do have to take into consideration your easement. Um, I, too, met with the people from IMPACT. Their design is beautiful. It will enhance Thompsonville. And I am going to ask for every effort to be made so that you're included, your property is included, and that we work with you in a fair and just way. And I believe we can do that. So as a longtime Thompsonville girl, um, I really want to see Thompsonville revitalized. And I think this can be an important piece of the puzzle, but that does not diminish that your property sits in an easement. And so I have faith that we will work together with you harmoniously to make that happen and to make you happy as well. Okay, thank you. Councilor Santanella. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Ungar. 
Thank you. Um, I support every effort for redevelopment for down in T-Ville and trying to clean things up and make it better. Um, but through the mayor to the town manager, um, is there ways that we can work with Mr. Riley to just make this very compatible and um, not interfere with his tenants and upset him too much? Yes, I believe there are. There are ways that we will make sure that that happens. So if I support this um, resolution, uh, there's still a lot more conversation that we're going to have mm -hmm. and have to agree on what is actually going to happen there and how it affects Mr. Riley. What was presented to you two weeks ago is a rendering. So all of this has to be has to be rendered into uh, Mr. Mr. Riley. So what Mr. happens Riley. now is the Thank site you. plan, the actual construction documents, the discussion with you and impact about what you want to see there. All of that will have to be taken into consideration, and that's where the discussion happens to ensure that the easements are preserved, access is preserved, or improved, because I do think that based on some preliminary conversations with their designers, that there is a better way for the two properties, the historic properties that sit on the top of that Pleasant Street Ridge, to actually be improved upon in terms of access. I do not agree with that. I do uh, not agree Mr. With your decision. Mr. Riley, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Out of order. And I would appreciate it if you didn't interrupt. That's inappropriate. Okay. And if it continues, I will ask you to leave. Okay. Councillor Ungar. Um, I just wanted to say the, the design plans that I saw didn't show that passage for his property. But with there will be changes and this is a rendering to give the town council an idea of what impacts vision is it is not anything legally binding it does not show anything because i'm not sh quite sure that they understood what that easement was when they when they compiled this this is extremely preliminary there's months of work that have to be done before anything becomes final on this okay okay thank you Councillor Santanella. Just, just Mr. Riley, it's nice to finally see you after the number of conversations we've had. This, this is, um, we are just engaging this firm. This is not about the drawing. This is not about your easement. We need a developer. It's, it's a drawing, Mr. Riley, so that we can understand their vision for that area. It, it's not the plan. And so uh, this is too important to Thompsonville. It is really important that we be redeveloping this parcel of land uh, to bring something spectacular into the community. And I truly respect your concerns. And as Councilor Pisner said, we are, we are be gonna be very respectful to you. But we need to sign this because we need to get going on this development. And this will not be the last that you hear from us. That will not be ultimately what goes in that space. Okay. It's a beautiful building. Okay. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. All right. What, 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 yeah. One last comment, Mr. Riley, and I just want you. I just want to hear it come out of my mouth. We will make sure that we will be communicating and that we will be working with you in regard to the easement on your property in regard to this very important project that we have going on. Absolutely. I'm okay. So. All right, and, and we and, and we will we 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 will make sure that we that that we work with you on this, okay? And we and, and we will do that. Let them know. I just have a question. And not even buy me a dollar grinder from Coronas and tell me where I'm going to park. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Okay. Thank you. Mike, go ahead. So, so Councillor Ludwick, two I, questions. I actually, the you mentioned it early. So, for these, I'm actually more concerned about the demolition, which we're going to be doing. So, I, 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 I'm not trying to open up a can of worms here, but man, I, how do I say this? I'm trying to be as legally correct as I can possibly be. 
we are going to be knocking down those buildings. That's taxpayer money and field taxpayer money. This uh, I know this is separate, so please just let me engage me, and I'm not coinciding the two. But if he has the easement, don't we have to address that? So it's separate than that. So when we go to knock down the buildings, isn't that when we have to address it? I'm just asking from a procedural standpoint. I believe you're correct. Okay. There yeah. are two distinct issues right. pertaining to Mr. Riley. Appreciate One, it. thank you. The safety of his tenants yep. and his house and his property during demolition, where our our building is literally on his property right. line, and then the subsequent issue about what happens to his property and his access as a potential development comes together. Right. And again, having been in that building many years ago, maybe one of the few people left who's been in there. Ooh, this could get expensive for us. We are planning for that, and we are also hiring a Class A demolition contractor, which is the highest level right. of demolition work. So, so I appreciate you saying this, so the public understands really the issue here. Mm -hmm. We want to work with the individual. Yeah. We're not trying to take anyone's property. No, but that actually, when you mentioned that earlier, that's actually the issue. And thank you for clarifying it so people, and I wish he was still here so he understood that, that we have, we have no choice, we have to work with them, mm -hmm. which is great. I mean, we should anyways, but we have to. And then my only concern with this, and I'm just saying, as I mentioned it, we, at some point we get a detailed financial estimation. Uh, it's a private public partnership. And so for me, I expect to see a lot of private money put in, not just simply getting federal credits because they qualify for them. That's, I mean, I'm just saying it's not in here at some point when we get to that negotiation with them. I'd like to see a little more detail on the private capital that's going in. That's all. You don't have to answer the question now. Mm -hmm. I'm for this, but I think that's the one thing for me that I'm still not, again, 100% sign on how that's going to work. Yeah. That's all. They did give you a, a general Yeah, they gave overview. us like an overview. But I, and they kind of yeah. said, hey, there's some risk. And I get all that. But I think, again, this is a private-public partnership. Yes. I just, so. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I think that's key for the public to understand that, you know, really, it's two separate issues. And really, we have the larger issue, unfortunately, as a town of Enfield. So thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungayer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. And Councilor Finger. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, H, discussion resolution. The resolution to waive the bid for sludge disposal services at the Enfield Water Pollution Consul Control Facility with MDC. Uh, earlier uh, today, the town manager did send additional detail uh, to us in regard to this. And the resolution reads, <clears throat> whereas the Enfield Water Pollution Control Facility generates approximately 1,500 dry tons of sludge each year, and whereas the town has utilized the Metropolitan District Commission for disposal of said sludge for at least nine years, and whereas MDC has provided reliable and efficient service, and whereas the WPCF has determined that there are no alternative nearby facilities with the capacity to process the town's sludge. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town council does hereby find, based on the foregoing compelling public interest, and in accordance with Chapter 5, Section 8D, that is therefore against, therefore against the best interest of the town to solicit bids for sludge disposal services at the Enfield Water Pollution Control Facility. So moved. Uh, Councillor Mangini. Second. Uh, second, Councillor Santanella. And uh, any further discussion on this? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ledwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right. I uh, discuss in resolution the resolution to approve a three year collective bargaining agreement with CSEA, local number 2001. Uh, this is a professional and technical union of town hall employees. And the resolution reads resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby approve. 
the three-year collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Enfield and the Connecticut State Employees Union, Local 2001, dated July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025, date prepared June 13th, 2022, prepared by Stephen Belinda. So moved. Uh, Councillor Mangini and a second. Second, Councillor Ungar. Uh, discussion. No discussion. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Casati. Four. Councillor Finger. Against. That's eight in favor, one against, and no abstentions. All right, Jay, discuss in resolution, resolution to adopt the new public safety systems technician job description. Um, we did receive the job descri description of the new position that was created through the budget. Um, and the resolution reads, resolve that in accordance with chapter seven, section two of the town charter of the Enfield Town Council does hereby appoint the position of public safety systems technician. Date submitted June 13, 2022. Submitted by Stephen Belinda, assistant town manager. So moved. Councillor Mangini second. and his second, Councillor Santanella. Uh, discussion? Uh, hearing none, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Councillor Santanella? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisotti? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. It's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right, Kay, discussion resolution, resolution to amend the assistant assessor job description. Um, there are some questions on this position as well, um, as I will ask uh, the town manager to summarize some of the changes that are in here. But before I do that, just I just wanna uh, read the resolution. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the following amendment of job description, description for Assistant Assessor. Date submitted June 14, 2022. Submitted by Steve Belinda, Human Resources Director. So we could have a little background on so that. So moved. Oh, Second. excuse me. Uh, oh. uh, Councilor Mangiti and Deputy Mayor Sakala. Okay. Now. Um, so for yep, discussion, I'm you. going to yield to the assistant town manager who's okay, been handling great. this thank matter. Thank you. So during the uh, budget process, you guys uh, voted on adopting a second assistant assessor position. We already have one assistant assessor, and she's been doing you know great work, but uh, we recognize that there's a need for another assistant assessor. As you can see, uh, there's a lot going on in that office. So what we did is we took the last job description that was approved back in, um, oh, I want to say about five, six years ago, which was a hybrid position. We had tried to work it out where uh, an employee would work both as the uh, assistant assessor and in the, as a tax collector. Uh, that hybrid did not work. Um, so we we're going back to the, um, the basics of just hiring someone that just has assistant assessor capabilities. Um, there was some comment on, you know, just a high school education. That is correct. Uh, the former uh, supervisor of assessment and revenue collection, that's all she had when she worked here. Uh, she started out as a dispatcher, worked up her way to an assessment clerk, uh, became a deputy assessor, then an assessor, and then the supervisor of assessment and revenue collection. This is such a nuanced field that you don't go to college for. You you have to get the experience in the office working it, uh, learning it through through people who have that skill set and, and uh, transferring it to this individual. And then you have to take uh, classes, uh, special classes, to get the certification. So that's why you see that we have to give them, uh, I believe, six years for them to work up to that. There's a high attrition rate. It's not easy. Um, that's why we have to home grow people as best we can. And if we can't do that, we have to find someone else who has that skill set. So it's not easy finding. And for whatever reason, people aren't going into assessor uh, career field. I don't know why. We're, we're struggling here. We're trying to find people. But um, the lower the standard as far as having only an outside high school education is really not the point here. It's what we can train them to do as pre uh, our history has shown to be the highest position in that department with just a high school degree. Okay, th thank you. 
uh, Councillor Mangini. Thank you. Thank you, um, Steve. My only concern, and I'm going to vote for this, um, I think, you know, obviously we need the position, is um, lowering the standard to a high school graduate, um, preferably an associate's degree, bachelor's degree, and I understand the job market being what it is, but, and again, you're the expert here, not me, mm -hmm. do you strongly feel that a high school graduate is um, in a good position to handle this job? Well, let me rebut that with, if I get, uh, the high, high school graduates at the floor. If I get deluge with associate's degrees, um, bachelor's degrees, we go for the higher education always. The, we, we try to get the highest uh, and best employee available to come work here. But if I don't, I'm coming back to you saying, hey, I had a minimum of a bachelor's degree. No one applied. Now I need a waiver. Okay, I got you. I got you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Councillor Pisner. Okay, so I guess my only question is we have somebody who's an assistant Assessor, correct? Correct. Okay. So is that person also considered a tax collector or just the assistant assessor? Nope, just an assistant assessor. So, uh, so just so I know I'm reading this right, so everything in red the person is not going to do, and the current person does not do any of this. Correct. The, the current person is qualified for this job. Oh, as no, no. I know oh, that. Okay. I know. But... But she's been already doing this job. The assistant assessor, not the tax part. That's why we carved out the, the tax, um, the collection of revenue. That was for the hybrid position that we were working with years ago. So I know there's two people in that office right now. Correct. Okay. One has been there forever. And the other has been there almost forever. Okay. So how is this position affecting their position? It's going to, uh, the one assistant It's going assessor, to help them. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So... This person will be under them, I'm assuming. Well, they're going to be co-equals, but this person's not going to be getting paid as the current in incumbent okay. in the position. But All right. she's going to have, she already has a shorter uh, learning curve. She's doing the job. She'll be. Okay. All yeah. right. Good enough. Councillor Ludwig. Real, I mean, I hate to say it, I I'm fine with a high school diploma because you're right. The job, job market is changing drastically. Can we reach out to the high school and have some sort of, I mean, if again, I know you want to get college grad people, but. I mean, anyone good with numbers can learn a job. Well, and we can start a pipeline through the high school. I'll take that over waiting for someone. Yeah. When we cast our net, we'll cast it far and wide, and we'll. We can mean, again, the high if you're school. good with numbers, you can figure this out. And usually, you know, again, someone coming out of an accounting class in high school or whatever, make calculus, whatever they be, they'd be pretty good at this. And hey, you know, if coming out of high school, why not have a, a pipeline into the town of Enfield? I'm just a suggestion yeah. to you. You're, you know, but. Um, I'm okay but, with it. But keep in mind, though, if we cast our net I hear you. include the but high school, and I have someone that already has um, the credentials from another municipality, so I'm going to go with that person. I hear you. The, I'm, the I'm shortest saying, learning yep. curve. I'm just saying it's an option. Okay. Yep. I, thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, Steve. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor, um, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. L, discussion. The resolution authorizing the town manager to submit applications to the state of Connecticut for the 2022 Neighborhood Assistance Act. Um, as I heard on the, uh, the last town council meeting, there were representatives from the St. Pat's Church. They expressed interest in, to, in this program. So we're adding them to the list of submissions that Enfield is sending to the State Department of Revenue Services. And I will read the uh, resolution right now. Whereas a public hearing was held on June 6, 2022, to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinion regarding which program shall be included in the Town of Enfield's application under the provisions of the Neighborhood Assistance Act. And whereas the public hearing, a representative of St. Pat's Church spoke requesting to submit a proposal for their project to replace a roof on the community center at the church. And whereas St. Pat's Church submitted a proposal to the town manager's office and whereas the following proposal is acceptable to the Enfield Town Council within the guidelines for proposed programs under the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Now, therefore, it be resolved that 
the Town of Enfield's additional 2022 proposed program proposal be submitted to the State of Connecticut Department of Revenue under the provision of Neighborhood Assistance Act. It shall consist of the proposal identified in the preceding paragraph. And two, the Enfield Town Manager is hereby uh, authorized to submit this application to the State Department of Revenue and to approve any donations received as a result of this application. Date prepared June 20th, 2022, prepared by the Office of Community Development. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. And Deputy Mayor Sakala. Um, any discussion in regard I'm, I'm to this? I'm trying to find the resolution. I just realized I don't have it. It's not in my packet. I have a job description on the back of mine, but I'm fine with it. I'm okay. All right. It's, it was uh, under L. Right. The back of it is the job description. It's not the resolution. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's okay. I'm with it. All right. Good. Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right, M, discussion 8-24, referral to the planning and zoning for 10 Maple Street for parking for Hazardville Institute, uh, the Hazardville Village. Uh, as indicated in the packet that we all received, the adjacent property owners, I think who are here tonight, um, are offering a donation of land to create uh, parking in the Hazardville Village. Before getting into the specifics of this, state law requires the referral to planning and zoning. So uh, here we are. So do I have a, a motion to approve? Um, Okay, Councillor Ludwig, it's seconded by uh, Councillor Ungeyer. Uh, any discussion? All right, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. It's nine in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All righty. Uh, is there any other business proper to come before this meeting? Okay. Uh, 13 public communications. Uh, is there any person to wish to come in front of the council again? And if you are interested, please state your name and address for the uh, record. Please refrain from personalities and uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, we have three minutes. Okay. Good. Yeah, sure. Mr. Mullen, how are you? <laughs> Mullen, um, Art Mullen, 80 Mullen Road. And I just want to take a second to thank you, Councillor Hopkins, for, for your input. I want to thank uh, Councillor Hopkins for his input tonight regarding the assessment situation. I think you brought some common sense to this whole thing. You kind of realize it's got to be done quickly, but you want to do your due diligence. You want to figure out what's going on, what's gone on, where it should be going, I think. I like that approach. I'm glad it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction tonight, going one way or the other. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys know the town of Enfield. You're very smart people. You know the citizens. So I'm hoping that kind of behind the scenes, you guys are going to get together and talk and come up as a group. I don't, I don't like to see this... You guys, uh, at, at some points there, seem like really on different sides. This is a very important issue, so I like your approach. I'm hoping that maybe you could spearhead this because you seem like you have the talents and, and get involved in this whole thing, and I can do your due diligence and, and take it from there. Now, from my point of view, <coughs> I get, uh, I've got a deck of these, what they call uh, field cards uh, from the assessor's office, and uh, every card has got different numbers and different dates on it. So if this was... Um, this was a building inspector or the police department or engineering or one of those groups, I would take my cards and go to those guys and say, hey, what's going on here? I got all these different numbers and facts and figures, but in this organization, I don't trust those people. I don't like to say that, but that's, I feel very uncomfortable. I don't feel I can go to them and get straight answers. So I might want to appeal some of this, or maybe I have to get my lawyer involved, but as you're doing your due diligence and you're coming up with a schedule, 
I'm kind of worried about, is my time running out to go back and say, I've got a problem with my cards, or I want to... I want to know more about my facts or figures before my time runs out, and I can't appeal that. So I do have a concern that it happens really quickly, but I hope you get down to the point where you can help people like me. And if it's going to take a long time, then maybe get us an extension so we have a little more time to go back and, and question these, these things. Like I say, uh, I've got probably six cards, different numbers, different dates. I can't figure it out. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, and uh, I need some help, but I don't feel comfortable going back to those people to ask, and I don't know what else to do. So thank you for your time. Anybody else that would like to come in front of the council tonight? Mr. T. Katz? Bob T. Katz, <coughs> 15 Woodgate Circle. Sandy Hook, that was a long time ago. But school security hasn't seemed to improve at all. And we keep it a secret, and I'm harping on this, we're keeping too many secrets about school security. Those schools are vulnerable. I've been in the military. I, I would know how to breach the school, school building. We, we keep harping on uh, secrets. We, they got everything all set, everything's done. Well, apparently it's not done because you got problems in Prudence Crandall. Uh, you probably got fire violations in there. You, you, you have to have two accesses to a room. There's only one. So, there's a, so we need a little more public input on what's going on and what's been done in the schools. I've been in the schools, and I think there's a lot of things that haven't been done. Uh, every police department, when there's a school shooting, they just stand down and stand around. The Marines, they'd go right in and, and take the person out. They wouldn't, they wouldn't wait 10 seconds. They would go right in there. So I don't know what the infield plan is. Are they going to st stand down like all the other school systems have done and let the, kill the children? The public needs to know what's going on. There's too many secrets in Enfield. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Anybody else want to come in front? Okay, I declare public communications are closed. Any final councilor comments? All right, the, the only thing I just want to mention to everybody, um, once again, thank you for everybody that did come out tonight. Um, once again, um, in regard to staying uh, healthy, um, you know, if you need to get vaccinated, your first or second boosters, Keep practicing your safe standards that, that we've all been doing. We have a 4th of July celebration coming up to all the residents of uh, Enfield. Uh, come on out and celebrate. Stay safe, everyone. And uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. Uh, Councillor Santanella. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, yay. Nine, nine in favor. No abstentions. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you and have a good evening.